आपको बोलना पड़ेगा वहां से कंट्रोल होता है उधर से भी होता है किसका वीडियो वीडियो एथर सर गुड मॉर्निंग हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग आई एर सर इन जॉइनिंग विद इन टेन टेन मिनट या या ही So, yeah, he said he will take by it ten thirty, nine thirty to ten thirty. Yeah. No, no, no. Around ten yeah. after ten minutes. So. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So actually, we are we all students are waiting for your informative lecture. <laughs> Am I audible? Yeah, yes, yes. You are audible, audible. Yeah, you are audible. Thank you. First, first, listen to Dr. Ahir's lecture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay.
Thank you. 
गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर हेर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम आई रिक्वेस्ट चेयरमैन ऑफ टूडे सेशन डॉक्टर एस डब्ल्यू सावरकर सर प्लीज ओके वेरी वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग सर डॉक्टर हेर सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग so today is the second day of uh, this five day training program on advanced diagnostic techniques in livestock and pets now i welcome trainees and speaker dr vedi ahir on dais with me dr shivaji tadekar organizing secretary dr ak sharma co organizing secretary then uh, dr bibi zawia chairman dr c m modi reporter so again i welcome all trainees for this today's session now you know that uh, today's eminent speaker is dr vidhi ahe dr vidhi uh, ahe uh, regarding dr vidhi ahe just i want to uh, introduce uh, him uh, dr vidhi ahe uh, is graduated and post graduated from veterinary science and animal husbandry from college of veterinary animal Uh, animal science for bani and uh, he did uh, uh, pg uh, P, pg from same college and phd from maharashtra animal and fishery science university nagpur after starting his career as a veterinary officer he worked as a professor and head of the department in the same uh, college uh, for bani and at the same time also he worked in udgir at the same time uh, for uh, in, uh, in further introduction he has uh, uh work for more than 30 years and he is having a teacher teaching research and extension kind of experience in veterinary surgery and radiology and uh, for uh, regarding uh, research publication uh, he is having 104 research publication to his credit 14 are published in international and 19 at 90 at uh, national level he has guided 36 mbc student he has handled research project funded by various agencies like icr and rkv and he was also elected member in particularly maharashtra state veterinary council from 2007 to 2018 and he has worked various capacities on uh, various uh, professional societies uh, and uh, he has organized more than 28 training programs in uh, maharashtra uh, animal and fishery science university and earlier in punjab rao krishi uh, sorry 
in Marathwada Sushi Vidyapeet Parvani. Uh, it is uh, very fortunate that today Dr. Vidi Aher is uh, working as a Director of Extension Education in Maharashtra Animal and Fishery Science at University. With this uh, little introduction, and we are having a good eminent speaker with us, and he is having a lot of experience in particularly in veterinary surgery and radiology. Uh, dear trainees, you know that uh, today's topic is uh, recent advances in diagnostic imaging technique in veterinary practice. As you know that uh, there are so many diagnostic techniques like complete tomography, MRI, neuroscopy, mammography, and angiography. These are uh, these techniques are having a lot of uh, importance, in particularly in respect to veterinary surgeon. And he, if he goes through these particular techniques, uh, it helps to particularly diagnosis of the particular case. At the same time, what is the progress in particular uh, while the treatment? So, with this few introductory remarks. I welcome Dr. Vidi Ayer and I hand over this dials to Dr. Vidi Ayer. So, Dr. Ayer, please. Thank you, Dr. Savarkar. So, good morning, everybody. So, first, I will share my screen. Some guidance is required. I think it is being difficult to share this screen. Somebody should guide me from organizer. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. You just share your uh, screen, sir. You please share yeah, your yeah. screen. Okay. How to share? So I am getting difficulty to share. You go. Take me guide. Screen level better. You have already shared your screen, sir. Okay. Just open the presentation. Right. Okay. Open, open. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. You enlarge it. Maximize it. You maximize it. Uh, yes. Okay. Is it visible? Yeah. <laughs> Please welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you all. First, I extend uh, the thanks for organizer for being sir. offered this opportunity for discussion. Yeah. Sir, is it audible? Excuse me, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Can you click on uh, yeah. full, full screen option? Is there full screen option? Is there? Please click. Yes. yes. Please, please click, sir. Please click. Come on, come on. Same, same, same. Yes, sir. Yes. Please click it. Where? Uh, yeah. Yes. For uh, left side. Just left side. Slide show is there. Slide show. Yeah. Use presenter view.
Is it visible? Sir, sir, hello, sir. You yeah. have to down. Uh, uh, yes, yes, girl. you click it, you click it, you click it. Yes, yes, yes. Now it is visible clearly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I welcome you all for this five-day online vocational training organized by Department of Fitness, Surgery and Radiology, College of Fitness Sciences and Animal Husbandry, Junagar Agriculture University, Junagar. So the topic for my presentation is recent advances in diagnostic imaging technique in veterinary practice. So we all know how the veterinary medicine or practice has been developed, particularly in diagnostic. So earlier, nothing was available. There were no tools were available. Whatever available tool was with the veterinarian for diagnosis in dispensary was with his hands. And whatever knowledge he gained through theory, so with the symptoms and with the available uh, knowledge gain, he has to diagnose in dispensaries. Then thereafter, everybody knows the uh, inventions or discoveries for the stethoscope and then stetho was the first tool in the hand of veterinarian and most of the time in field, the stethoscope and veterinarian, they used to diagnose the cases with the help of stethoscope only and uh, how stetho is also developed you know all the histories so with this there was somewhat reversible changes in the treatment in veterinary side and then most of the time you will appreciate you will accept that the veterinary field veterinary science developed at par with the medical science and following the whatever developments in the medical field for in diagnosis so most of the development, the first invention uh, was the X-ray and X-ray, it was first used in human side and the same X-ray machine was used in veterinary field for diagnosis purpose. So with the development of X-ray in 1895, the development of imaging techniques has been observed. So human and veterinary diagnostics, they uh, went hand in hand in developed countries still in developing country, it, it is uh, being followed after the developed countries, uh, whatever facilities are available. And with the invention, discoveries, and the technology development, now we know radio diagnosis, telemedicine, telesonography, teleradiology. So these are the terms emerge. And these imaging techniques are developed, which establish a standard baseline of normal anatomical, physiological, or functional parameters which help in research and treatment in this veterinary field. So right from evolution, everybody knows how there is evolution uh, and revolutions in the economy, right from agriculture revolution, industrial revolution, then IT revolution, these three revolutions. So in industrial revolutions, First, uh, steam and water power revolution was there. Then second, electricity and assembly lines was the revolution. And the third was the important, that is computerization. So this is digital revolution. And with the, the digital revolution started from late 60s, uh, 50s to 2000 year. So now we are uh, supposed to be in the fourth uh, industrial revolution so we discuss the digital revolution. So digital revolution, it started between 1950s to 1970s. So it is development of technology from mechanical and analog to digital. So digitalization has been came in existence and with this introduction of digital technology, it changed the way human communication. So now, 
via computers, cell phones, and the internet. The, this revolution lead way to information age. So this is the uh, digital revolution. So in veterinary practice, as far as diagnostic imaging are concerned, in 1950s to 60s, in this decade, fluoroscopic image intensifier and gamma camera, camera and uh, radio nuclear type imaging was developed. Then in between 1960s to 70s, in this decade, automated film processor was developed. Then 1970s to 1980s, rear up screen film system, that is uh, advanced projection radiography, digital subsection angiography, computed tomography, and ultrasound. These techniques uh, were developed. Then during 1980s to 90s, computed radiography, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, and color Doppler ultrasound was developed. And then 1990 to 2000, till date, real-time 3D ultrasound imaging used clinically, then parallelly MRI, PET, CT, molecular imaging, and tax. So this is what the revolution took place. Or this is evolutionary history of the diagnostic imaging technique since last 50 years. So presently we are in what revolution? So, so this is the fourth industrial revolution. Describe the exponential change to the way we live, work, and relate to one another. So this fourth industrial revolution is a way of blurring the boundaries between physical, digital, and biological world. It's a full, uh, it's a fusion of uh, blurring of boundaries between physical, digital, and biological world. So it's a uh, advancement in artificial in intelligence, robotic, then the internet of things, then 3D printing, genetic engineering, quantum computing, and other technologies. So this is the recent revolutionary change in the fourth industrial revolution in, in developed countries. Still, these changes are to be awaited to reach in our country so with the internet and the digitalization, everything is reaching to each and every corner of the globe. So whatever things are available, they are coming to India, mostly in metros, these are utilized. Still in field condition, in village, in remote places, still we are divided of all these advanced techniques. So what are the modalities which can be used under Indian conditions? So digital radiography nowadays, it is being used in India. IITV, this is routine use. Ultrasound is also routine use. MRI is used in medical side. On veterinary side, uh, I think uh, the first day Dr. Gehlot was there. Uh, he is renowned surgeon and professor from Rajasthan who first uh, introduced CT at uh, Bikaner at his place in his junior city as a center and it is available for veterinary side. Otherwise, computed tomography, it is available for human side only. Then PET, nuclear skin tigraphy, this is also available uh, from uh, human side, but in our uh, university, Marsh Animal and Fishery Sciences University in Mumbai Veterinary College, this nuclear skin tigraphy is available. Then laparoscope, it is available everywhere in each of the institute in veterinary side also. Then digital subtraction angiography, this is very commonly used in human health. So routinely in most of the institutes, hospitals, this is available. Endoscopy available everywhere from both the side, human side, veterinary side, pulse oximetry. This, yeah, this is advanced technological instrument. Now, nowadays everybody knows with the corona pandemic, what is the use of pulse oximetry? Then telemedicine and tele radiology. So these are the terminology with the digitalization invention with the IT reform, reform where from a distance we can have telemedicine. I mean, through the communication, we can guide, we can see the picture, diagnose the things, and we can give the uh, treatment. So this is what from one place to another, through internet, we can have access for telemedicine, teleradiology, same. So radiological pictures are to be uh, 
uh, sent to the remote from remote places to the higher center and advice is taken and same the advice from the higher center from the expertise is to be given to the remote center this is what telemedicine tele radiology so these are the modalities can be used in present situation in india so one by one we we'll discuss all these diagnostic techniques recent diagnostic te techniques in veterinary practice so first digital radiography before going for digital radiography we should discuss what was the traditional method traditional radiography so all of you know the x ray machines so those machines were not available with the uh, dispensaries and remote places it was available earlier with the invention it came in human side then the human machines uh, were imported and uh, from siemens mostly from germany the quality x ray machines were imported in india and uh, i was very lucky when i joined in 1979 uh, after that uh, in 89 before that uh, i joined in pg before that there was installation of siemens 3d suspension machine in our institute college of veterinary animal sciences parbhan and it was its uh, Uh, it was uh, third in india of its kind so that was a wall mounted suspension uh, siemens machine xr machines and 1000 ma capacity it was and so again the whatever machines available with human practitioner these are of 100 or uh, 300 ma and uh, mostly for large animal we require the higher ma and which was available or which was earlier the facility provided by the these machines for uh, 800 1000 ma uh, capacity machines where in which the large animal x rays of all parts were feasible otherwise only extremities were visible or will be examined under a radiography with a small ma requirement exposure factor so this was the earlier situation thereafter <coughs> then this x ray uh, Uh, traditional x-rays were uh, available and uh, these x-rays were uh, with the help of uh, developed with the help of chemical processing so that was the convention and the films were used these were x-ray films that is the film screen radiography was used in traditional conventional radiography now it was again thereafter with the invention decades uh, in the 19 Uh, 90 to 2000, the computed radiography replaced this conventional radiography. In computed radiography, uh, the photostimulated luminescence cassette, that is, uh, imaging plates, were replaced by uh, cassette or film, X-ray film. These were replaced, and then uh, thereafter, now. Uh, digital radiography direct digital radiography is the recent invention wherein the uh, flat panel detectors are used and directly you may have the visible image digital image and we can share the images so this is what there is invention or the development in the radiography so now digital radiography so uh, digital radiography divided into computed radiography and direct digital computed digital radiography where is imaging plates are used whereas um, no films or plates are used in direct digital radiography where we can use the flat panel detector and this is very sensitive but uh, there is cost limitation here in uh, direct digital radiography so here there are two pictures left side picture it shows this is so left side picture where the uh, lady owner having her pet or which is being radiograph or we uh, examine with computed radiography so this is computed radiography where the films that is imaging plates are there and the it will provide the picture on the monitor then right side this is digital radiography where the patient is lying down is lying 
uh, in the mice uh, on the table in the machine and where there is direct pictures are taken where flat panel detectors are used in computer drivers how it works so imaging plates are used they store so whatever in earlier radiography traditional radiography we used to have film inside the cassette it was kept under the patient body of the patient then uh, a x-ray machine was on and it uh, it was shoot and the x-ray beam is uh, passing to the body body parts depend upon the uh, density of the body part or the atomic number of the organ and body parts the x-rays were passing through the organs in heart tissue having more uh, intensity the x-rays were absorbed in the tissue and less number of x-rays were reaching to the film that's why you may not be in black uh, white <coughs> whereas uh, with the soft tissues the x-rays were passing through and through due to density less density and they were reaching to the film and changing the uh, film darker or black density was observed this is how x-ray traditional x-ray was working here in computed radiography instead of these films these uh, these uh, imaging plates are used these plates they are kept under the body after exposure to the x-ray these uh, first per layer of these plates uh, carry some information and then these plates were read with the reader or scanner and then with the scanner directly digitalization was done and it was creating a digital image and this digital image was enhanced with the software and it can be shared and again that film what imaging plate used was uh, erased and it was reused for another x-ray here it was very easy method where it replaced the traditional method of developing process in a dark room where the tanks were there solution was there and uh, so many factors were affecting the quality here so it is easily available uh, uh, pictures excel pictures we can zoom it we can have uh, we can detect the minor changes uh, minor defects in the tissue by zoom or with this uh, digitalization facility we may have so this is computer radiography how it works then digital radiography in digital radiography flat panel detectors are there where the direct image are processed the x ray passing through the body carrying uh, information reaching uh, and the image is processed with the receptor and it is displayed and we can save it we can send it to the other places and this is these are the facilities with the digital radio so digital radiography how it is uh, working our conversion process is direct and indirect there are two methods in a direct method photoconductor that is available in a direct method so it can be used this uh, amorphous uh, selenium that is available as photoconductor so x rays are passing through this and these are converted down to electrical charge and then it was read out clear in tft and it was uh, sent to adp analog to digital conversion and digital signals were produced and it was uh, uh, shown on the monitor and we can see the picture on monitor directly and we can save it we can zoom it we can enlarge it and we can send it uh, to the other places so that is the advantage and it's very quick and very good quality uh, pictures of the uh, x-ray pictures are available with this digital radiograph so this is very good invention in this radiographic field then second tool a uh, modality can be available in image system is available we are using it that is image intensifier tv system so this is image intensifier tv system this is also called as siam procedure unit siam x ray machine siam intensifier mobile siam machine or portable siam x ray machine so it is uh, by this name you will identify how it's used this is used in orthopedic surgery so where uh, the incident x ray photon are converted to light photon of sufficient intensity and in working 
during maneuvering or surgical operations we can use it and mostly for orthopedy in fracture repair so for nailing uh, this is very commonly used everywhere and here cm detector panel is available in this machine and it helps the intraoperative site for the intraoperative orthopedic manipulation and we can store the images for further reference purpose so this is mostly used for nailing stingman pinning uh, with a small incision and uh, we can see it uh, for interlocking nails also we can see it and we can perform the maneuvering or uh, repair of the fracture so what is the principle so this is the uh, picture of the this c arm so it is in the fashion of english word c that an arm in, in just like arms that's why the name terminology c arm it is term as c arm so on one side just like our earlier traditional x ray machine x ray tube is available and on opposite side image intensifier is there in between the part to be radiograph is to be kept the patient is to be kept here yeah, on the other side on the other figure it is mentioned on the table patient is lying the x ray are produced and they are passing so this is the x ray beam they are passing through the body of the patient they are carrying information and then the uh, x ray passing through the body they are reaching to the uh, this intensifier so here grids are available to avoid uh, the scattered radiation and, and then the uh, image intensifier which intensify the image and it will be sent to the uh, video and monitor and we can see the picture directly during operation we can see and we can see here we can uh, 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 use this uh, technique for the nailing or passing of the steam and pin for fracture repair then we can set the dislocation with the help of during this maneuvering we can see exact uh, uh, what is uh, being um, going inside the body uh, at the bone level or in the fracture uh, in the joint and we can have access directly so that there will be no any loopholes and we can have perfect uh, Uh, repair of dislocation and fracture so this is very useful for orthopedic surgery so uh, another depiction how it works so here x ray are passing through the body and they are x ray photon converted into light photon in intensifier then light photon converted into electron and they are sent to the uh, monitor and they are seen on the monitor so this is iitv this is very routinely used from for uh, uh, veterinary patients also in clinics and in field also now third modality which is very popular very commonly used in veterinary practice is ultrasound so what are ultrasound these are high frequency sound waves about 20 kilohertz that is used to produce the image of the body so for diagnostic purpose the ultrasound having frequency ranging between 2 to 10 megahertz these are used even higher frequencies are used in advanced techniques so so it works how it works ultrasound it works in pulse echo technique where the ultrasound waves or pulses of sound are sent from transducer and they propagate through the different tissues and then return to the transducer as reflected echoes and these readings are uh, taken and depend upon density just like x ray we have discussed depend upon density x ray are passing through and through the body structure whereas here the uh, the ultrasound waves are striking to the organs and they are reflected back depend upon density they will be reflected in the form of echoes and because of that different images will be observed on monitor echoic hyper echoic anechoic so likewise depend upon the difference in independence in the tissues the there will be difference in densities on the uh, monitor with the film and we can differentiate soft tissue hard tissue any defects pathology from the normal so this is how the ultrasound works so this is the transducer of the ultrasound at the end at the tip of the transducer 
the uh, piezoelectric elements are in transducer these crystals are uh, present with these crystals now through this the pulses are ultrasound waves are uh, going to the body of the uh, patient and uh, to avoid uh, the defects uh, the jelly is used media is used to have a contact between transducer and the patient uh, body of the patient uh, through this waves are uh, reaching so these piezoelectric crystals are changing and uh, they produce the ultrasound waves and they are reaching to the tissue organ and depend upon the impedance or the density either they will be reflected and same reflected echoes are again uh, read by this piezoelectric current they are sent uh, to the uh, displayed to the monitor and we can see the picture so this is in situ this is uh, a dog the abdomen of the dog uh, thorax of the dog is viewed here and uh, this is another picture where in the ultrasonography of the eye of the horse is under examination so ultrasound this is very common to use for small animal this is very feasible useful just like human for small animal in ruminants uh, it is not explored fully so at some of the centers uh, i think uh, there is a uh, Uh, deliberation from Dr. Mahindra, professor from Ludhiana, who worked on ultrasonography in large animal, and he has developed. Hello, is it audible? Continue. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I think some uh, disturbance is there. That's why I inquired. Okay, so this ultrasonography is not fully. explored and used in large animals so now it is under research and under use so some of the its use in large animal is being established at advanced center uh, institutes in the india and uh, it, it will take time to reach into the dispensaries and in the field even uh, large animal practitioners are using it so with this advancement definitely this is a very popular modality and uh, the, it will be routinely used for large animal also in future are you sir hello like the sir
Sir, please continue. You are audible. Hello. My PPT is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. No. Huh? Sir, screen is not there. Screen is not there. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen. screen. Oh, green, green, green. Green icon. Sir, down, down. Yeah. 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 Okay. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen, sir. Full screen, sir. Full screen. Full screen. Full screen. Full Full screen. 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 Full Yes, yes, yes. Please continue. Yes, sir. Please continue. This is a home. We are discussing about ultrasound. So this is the ultrasound. This is a very popular technique. Will be more popular with the large animal also in near future. So presently it is very popular for small animal. And the sir, next modernity. Sir, excuse me, sir. Sir. Yeah. So full screen karan full Yeah. Screen. Full screen. Khali full screen. Is the button nahi khali? Yes. Please. No, it's empty, 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 it's F5 करो तो भी चलेगा F5 करना F5 ठीक चल रहा है सर हाँ सर ये F5 दबा F5 दबी दे F5 दबा F5 वर पा अब जब कीबोर्ड पे F5 है सर F5 कीबोर्ड पे F5 है प्लीज यार हम सर्चिंग F5 कीबोर्ड 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 तुमसे कीबोर्ड है ना सर Okay, sir, you continue, please. No problem. Ah, okay. You please continue. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Then the next model it is MRI. MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. This is very sensitive and non-invasive technique, and this is very uh, useful for diagnostic purpose. In human side, this is very common use nowadays. So it has some uh, cost involvement. It is a costlier affair. So in veterinary practice, it will be introduced in West, uh, developed countries. This is being used, whereas in India, still. Its use is in infancy in veterinary faculty and it is infrequent. To date, MRI has been developed 
uh, in clinical cases in developed countries, it is routinely used for a CNS diseases in small animals. And it has wider spectrum of applications. So for imaging all body regions, it is used. So this is very, uh, how this MRI works, that is important. So MRI makes use of certain magnetic properties. So the patient is kept in the magnetic field and uh, then the uh, magnetic field, strong magnetic field is produced and uh, that force proton in the body, body structure tissue to align with that field. And when a radio frequency current is then pulsed through the patient, the protons are stimulated and they are pulled and spin out of equilibrium and straining against the pool of magnetic field. So this is how the principle of MRI, how it works. So depending upon the hydrogen content or in the water, in the water, in body content in the water or hydrogen content in the uh, magnetic field, uh, the, the, uh, there will be changes and the, it needs a, a strong magnetic field like one Tesla. And then MRI uses the magnetic property of hydrogen and its interaction with both the external magnetic field and radio rolls to produce highly detailed image of the body. So this is the principle here, uh, yes, with figure, with the help of illustration, we may have a clear uh, idea about the principle here. Uh, the trans receiver chief, here uh, there is transmission. Uh, where the exciting coil is there and through this uh, the radio frequency waves are uh, being uh, passed and in the magnetic field patient is kept and then another side there is reaching coil. So after the passing the patient uh, uh, the gradient field and RF excitement, radio frequency excitement, it goes through the body then the hydrogens are pulled to one side and the hydrogen ion get settled and it emits the radio frequency signals. These radio frequency signals are received by the receiving coil and sent to the receiver. Then it is sent to the uh, analog to digital converter ADC uh, which converts these signals in the form of a digital image and there will be image construction. So with this principle this MRI works and it is very good for soft tissue uh, anomalies to be diagnosed or diseases to be diagnosed concerned to musculoskeletal diseases. Then magnetic uh, resonance angiography, it is a recent technique being used with the MRI. Then MRI spectroscopy, these are the advanced techniques now used with this machine MRI. And this MRI can differentiate inflammatory process from uh, neoplastic tissue. Or mass, or a neoplastic mass, a tumor from the peritumoral edema. So minor differences between the peritumoral edema, then the inflammatory tissue and the neoplastic tissue can be possible with this MRI. That's why in early stages we can diagnose the tumors also, and we can start the treatment and can save the patient. This is the more advantage, advantageous compared to rest of the uh, diagnostic modalities are limited. And this MRI is very specific and sensitive in detecting, localizing and differentiating the tumors, uh, especially osteomyelitis, uh, that is the inflammation of the bony tissue, and then cellulitis, abscesses, we can differentiate and we can diagnose with the MRI. So this is, in Pune, this is commonly used for, this is established in a human institute, can be used the facility can be used by veterinarian for pets and we can diagnose the cases with the help of MRI in pets. Then the next modality, this is the advanced technique available, that is CT scan, computed tomography. So, it is, uh, you can have a difference between computed tomography rather than uh, as comparison with the radiography. So it is different, whereas in radiography, X-ray beam is produced in, in plane, a single beam is produced 
and that is passed in the body of the patient here. It is in a 360 degree rotation. The X-rays are produced and they are passing through the body and on the other side there are detectors, digital detectors of the X-ray and they detect and uh, in the layer the narrow beam of the X-ray is passed through the body and it is scanned successive layer. Uh, the transmission of X-ray photon across a particular layer can be measured and, we, I, and it can be seen on computer, a picture can be seen on monitor, uh, image will be formed of the internal structure, uh, body structure. So this is very useful for diagnosis of tumor, malformation, inflammation, degenerative and vascular diseases and trauma. So in CT means cross section, you may have the X-ray picture of a tissue organ in cross section. So this is illustration, this is the CT scan wherein the horse is examined and the patient will be in the uh, kept, uh, small uh, pets can be kept on the table here. This is feasible for large animal in standing. A horse is being viewed, examined uh, under CT. And uh, here, the principle how it works. On one side, there is a X-ray tube. On another side, the digital uh, detectors are there and in fan shape manner. The machines, the CT scan moves and the patient is uh, passed in the body, uh, in the machine, uh, in the grade and uh, the in cross section, the images of the patients are taken. So, CT scan produces detailed images of many uh, uh, structures inside the body, including the internal organ, blood vessels and bone. So, it diagnoses the condition like damage to the bone, injury to the internal organ, then uh, blood flow, any hindrances, a problem with the blood flow, stroke or even cancer, it is very well diagnosed with the CT scan. So, earlier discussion, so this is the X-ray tube and other side there is skin relation detector, the X-rays are passing through the body and scan slices of the body, the pictures are taken and they are sent to the uh, skin relation detector and they will change it in, in the form of digitalization image will be produced. So the CT scan, so working is uh, the patient lies on the bed, a small animal or pet and that slowly moves through the uh, gantry while X-ray tube rotates around the body of the patient shooting a narrow beam of X-ray through the body. So here instead of film, CT scanners are used and uh, special digital X-ray detectors which are located directly opposite of the X-ray source, they detect the, uh, uh, the X-ray passing through the body and they convert it in, in the form of image, digital image. So this is how the CT works. Then another advanced modality is PET, positron emission tomography. This is advanced technique wherein short life isotopes are used. These are incorporated in the body of the patient and uh, the substances used by the body such as glucose, which is observed by the tumor of interest. So these PET scans are often viewed along side computation uh, CT scans, which can be performed on the same equipment without moving the patient. So CT scan uh, machines can be used for the uh, reading the PET or for use of PET. This allows the tumor detected by CT scan. This is the principle how it works. So with the uh, So here, first with the syringe, short light isotopes are injected in the body of the patient and the patient is then, then kept under camera and the uh, and it is viewed and uh, the uh, digital detectors, they detect and then the they are, uh, whatever the information gained will be digitalized in the form of image, it is processed 
and very good pictures pet images you can appreciate and you, you can diagnose a minor changes with the gamma cameras so this is the horse yeah yeah this is in rotation the detection of the x ray uh, the, uh, the sorry the radio isotopes uh, that are injected in the body uh, and the uh, pet scanning is done here uh, instead of moving the x ray tube here there is no need and very good pictures minor changes can be detected with a pet scan so this is very useful uh, modality as compared to uh, ct scan and even uh, mri so when you compare a ct scan or mri mri produces clear images compared to ct scan when need a view of soft tissue mri is a better option so mri create better picture of organ and soft tissue so mri can give clear cut idea for diagnosis of the torn ligaments then herniated disc so that's why it it is preferred over the ct scan then nuclear scintigraphy earlier i told about this this technique modality is available under our university at mumbai veterinary college with the courtesy of baba academic research center so they installed the nuclear scintigraphy in the department of uh, nuclear medicine in mumbai veterinary college this is a very highly sensitive advanced procedure in which a radio isotope here radio isotope technetium 99 are used to detect the functional abnormalities of the body so this modality differ to earlier whatever tools available here we can know we can have idea about the functional abnormalities so uh, of the organs can be detected with the nuclear skin therapy and here the interpretation of this uh, nuclear skin therapy is based on the radioactivity regions so bright region are uh, that is called as hot spot where there is increase radioactivity and there are some spots where there is decrease radioactivity these are called as cold spot depend upon the perfusion so uh, so example uh, active process is indicated by hot spot while a dull process uh, like a lack of perfusion is indicated by cold spot so depend upon this we can diagnose the defects changes pathologies here the here the animal uh, can stand aside to the machine there is no need just like ct uh, ct scan where the patient is kept in the uh, gantry here there is no need the patient can uh, stand laterally to the machine and it can examine so this is used for uh, detecting the functional disorders of the tissues kidney liver lung gi tract thyroid gland and many other organs so this is very common use you are very common use are will be useful for acute lameness lung perfusion and ventilation and frequency of ureter in both small and large animal also used for vertebral column imaging and monitoring the progress of fracture healing and in tumor detection this is very perfectly used for even detection and for treatment a follow up of the treatment can be done with this skin tigraph so this is most advanced technique but it is a costly affair where gamma camera is used to detect the uh, images in the skin tigraph and because of this gamma camera the cost of the instrument is high and that's why there is a limitation but this is very advanced technique for research side also this can be used to know the functional abnormalities of the, the organ then the next modality is laparoscopy this is uh, very popular now laparoscopy from human side it has uh, entered in the veterinary field in the veterinary practice and it is now routinely used at the advanced center and some of the prior practitioners they are routinely used so while lab laparoscopy human uh, life is precious likewise in pets also the cost is not the limitation uh, the pets 
the owners of the pet they can offer a, a reasonable cost for saving the life of the pets because they are emotionally attached as far as large animals are concerned the cost limitations are there but for pet practice this laparoscopy is becoming popular so even in human this has become popular because this is key word surgery minimal invasive surgery so minimum or less trauma and hospitalization for shorter duration and even the key word surgery uh, stitchless surgery we can say and uh, there is no need to open the abdomen uh, and uh, the chances for uh, getting infection so these are minimized reduce and the pain and then post operative healing and that period will be also reduce and the pain will be less so this is how laparoscopy surgery is being preferred this is for therapeutic purpose even the laparoscopy can be used for diagnostic purpose so uh, laparoscopy as a diagnostic and therapeutic tool in human clinical medicine so only in the last 15 years it has uh, extensively used and become popular for research and clinical diagnosis and therapeutic purpose so now it is gaining importance in veterinary field also and it adva- uh, gives significant advantage over open surgeries as we discuss in human for polycystotomy appendicitotomy uh, appendicitotomy then vagotomy then hernia repair and adhesion repair this is common use for gynecological problems like scoria and cyst or in the case of oophorectomy hysterectomy laparoscopic surgery this is used but for diagnostic purpose for diagnosis also and even after diagnosis immediately treatment can be done with this modality so this is uh, becoming a popular this is one of the image one of my postgraduate students worked on uh, laparoscopy laparoscopic spaying in beaches and comparing and to study with the traditional and laparoscopy so these are the picture this is the setup in our university and then this is for diagnostic purpose for biopsy collection we can use laparoscope and we can have take us tissue sample biopsy sample for diagnosis purpose then direct examination of abdominal cavity with minimal invasion or superficial surgical intervention keyhole surgery we can perform then another part of this laparoscopy is thoracoscopy which is very useful in diagnosis and treatment of diseases of pleura lung mediastinum great vessels pericardium and esophagus so visceral inspection of thoracic cavity by thoracoscopy has been used to provide a more accurate diagnosis and prognosis in horses affected with pleura pneumonia and other thoracic and esophageal disorders thoracoscopy allows visualization of bi- and biopsy of large surface of the lung and provide adequate specimen for histopathological diagnosis so this is how this uh, laparoscopy uh, tool can be used in veterinary field in veterinary practice then another important is digital subtraction angiography uh, though it has uh, not been popularized in uh, veterinary side this is very popular in human health in human uh, practice this is a common use and uh, this is a readable graphic modality which allows dynamic imaging of the vascular system following intravascular injection of ionized x-ray contrast media uh, and uh, through the use of image intensification and enhancement of this iodine signal and digital processing of the image here we can subtract the actual image of the bone and soft tissue and only we can have picture image of the uh, vessels and we can diagnose the blockages in the vessel or stenosis of the vessels so this is how this is very popular in uh, cardiac patient in human for angiography this is commonly used for diagnosis of uh, stenosis uh, sorry for uh, blockages uh, atherosclerosis in human so uh, how it works principally so x ray tube x rays are passed and goes through the body part and it will actually here in a figure a will detect the heart tissue Uh, the bony tissue the skull uh, through which the uh, x ray will pass the image will be developed then that will be actual mask image it will be masked 
and then actual angiogramic image so simultaneous image both images will be processed by the computer and it will hide the images of the heart tissue temporal bone or uh, soft tissues and it will depict show only the uh, picture of the vessels and angiographic subtracted image will be formed and clear cut you can appreciate from a b c d uh, on the uh, right uh, bottom here in a b c d you can appreciate the vascular pictures you can diagnose the blockages in the vessels so this is very uh, good modality as per as human uh, cardiology or Uh, heart diseases are concerned, so it will be used for a research purpose, and in uh, near future it may be used in veterinary faculty. Then endoscopy. So likewise, the laparoscopy was studied uh, the internal examination of the abdomen. Here endoscopy, the term endoscopy is derived from Greek word endoscopesis, means to watch inside carefully. Internal examination of the body tissues. Our body cavity is called as endoscopy. So this is the input device with a miniature wireless video camera that sends images to the monitor inside structure of the body without any surgery. So we can pass through the natural orifices through mouth, nose, anus. We can pass the endoscope, the probe. So there, that is a fiber optic which is present and inside the light source is there and camera is there which. Uh, Shows the uh, uh, take the picture of uh, inside picture of the organ that is in the organ tubular organ mucous membrane uh, that will be pictureized any changes inflammation of the mucous membrane any growth over the mucous membrane can be shown any obstruction in the lumen foreign bodies can be diagnosed and the images will be shown uh, through the fiber optic small uh, probe or uh, scope. And that will be sent to the video, and we can see the images outside uh, over the video or over the screen, and we can uh, do the we can perform the needful things. We can take a bio sample. We can uh, perform this uh, remove the foreign bodies, and we can examine the internal structures, mucous membrane, and internal things. Uh, to diagnose the uh, pathologies and the diseases, and it can be used for therapeutic purposes. So this is how, but the anesthesia is required. Uh, the cooperation in human it's okay, for uh, in pets it is feasible. Uh, whereas in large animal, uh, the this wire uh, scope. that is pass it is fiber optic it is very delicate sensitive it should not get damaged that that's why this is, this is the only limitation under general anesthesia we can perform the endoscopic examinations so mostly gi tract examination gastroscopy in dogs we can perform the internal uh, examination of the esophagus then uh, stomach likewise and we can perform and we can remove the foreign bodies Okay, then bronchoscopy. Uh, this is uh, this can be used for examination of bronchi, uh, respiratory tract. So this is uh, used in our institutes routinely. Then these are the foreign bodies from the dog removed under the GA retrieval of foreign bodies. This is also these are also used by private practitioners in field. They have their own machines and they are using it. And these are preferred by the owners, uh, as like human uh, in animals also in pets. This is preferred rather to conventional surgery. Okay. Then pulse oximetry. This is another modality. Now uh, it is used. Earlier it was used in research purpose, and in uh, some in advanced countries now. And in develop, uh, developing countries like India, because of COVID pandemic, each and every citizen is also knowing about this pulse oximetry, uh, where the uh, to know the uh, oxygen concentration in the blood or the saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen uh, for monitoring 
uh, in the re cardio respiratory functions mostly in corona pandemic which affect the respiratory functions and there is uh, dyspnea and difficulty in respiration in advanced stages uh, in patients and to avoid that to overcome uh, that is the only cause for death and to overcome that everybody was cautious about this uh, uh, oxygen concentration in the blood uh, to measure it and for that pulse oximetry is being personally even the, that is uh, oximetry is being given, uh, purchased by these uh, uh, risky patients and they are monitoring uh, the patients of the covid also uh, uh, corona patients in covid 19 pandemic so this is why this has become popular and uh, this pulse oximeter is used for oxygen saturation of hemoglobin in, in blood and how it works that uh, hemoglobin uh, absorbs very amount of light dependent on its saturation with oxygen and that color is changed and that is red digitally and it will give the concentration in the form of figures so this is uh, the very good where you can know the uh, pulse and the uh, saturation of the oxygen in blood so this is non invasive <coughs> that's why its use is uh, very easy and popular it has become popular and uh, now last we will discuss about the telemedicine and teleradiology so with the invention of the inter use of the inter internet and <coughs> with the because of this uh, change fourth uh, uh, revolution in the with the advancement in the uh, information technology and the internet uh, one can contact of a patient uh, can contact expertise in higher centers uh, at a remote uh, at a distance place and the expertise from the higher center may advise to the patient or to the owner in the periphery uh, to the doctors in the periphery so this is how earlier it was used it was become it was very popular veterinary surgeons uh, for long duration tradition they are consulting each one uh, and second opinion third opinion is taken by patient also even there is a technical discussions uh, among the expertise doctors uh, professors on the cases uh, to have more uh, discussion and perfect diagnosis it was used earlier telephone were used now with the internet we have direct communication we can send the pictures we can send for diagnosis we can send the x-ray pictures ct images then pet images likewise ultrasonography uh, pictures and we may seek we can procure the expertise advice through this this is how and the patient can say uh, you can pass on the information regarding the uh, <clears throat> whatever symptoms uh, he is observing he is uh, suffering and he may have uh, expertise advice doctors advice with the telemedicine so this is what telemedicine likewise teleradiology the radiological pictures are sent and expertise opinion for diagnosis is taken so teleradiology so this telemedicine and teleradiology extend this further by use of internet so with the internet news there is tremendous change a person from a <coughs> remote place is connected through the globe to any person to the higher center that's what the change has brought everything in our pocket so with the uh, that internet um, net connectivity in our mobiles and uh, everything the globe is in hand so with this invention and that's why the treatment uh, facilities uh, the availability of treatment <coughs> has become very easy cheap converse, uh, comfortable and uh, the quality of life is increased and even the health facilities are provided uh, very easily and uh, advanced expertise opinion is sought so this is what use of telemedicine and teleradiology so with this invention <coughs> in the it internet so everything the globe has come together near and uh, 
the whatever facilities available are available and for the treatment of the patient and the uh, quality of life is increased so with this i conclude the advances in diagnostic technology in veterinary surgery in is infancy stage in india so though in metro and with the advanced centers it is the facilities are available yet to reach to the field it will take time naturally Uh, we have discussed about the internet and uh, the internet of thinking 3d imaging then virtual reality so then it uh, intellectual uh, uh, things what we discuss that is more advanced that is available in uh, developed countries in our country india developing country at the higher centers so somewhere these facilities are in place still it will take time to reach the uh, field so naturally uh, time is the solution and with the advancement in technology everything is reaching and everyone is getting benefited with this advancement in technology so and all of the effort is required to introduce the basic imaging models still which are not available in field so excel machines ultrasound it should be available and should be routinely used in practice in district polyclinics and city hospitals and they should reach to the mini polyclinics at tehsil place and even at the dispensary the use of radiology need to be standard by its optimum use in clinical cases so that is the conclusion with this <coughs> i conclude my topic and i Uh, extend thanks to the organizer for providing me this opportunity to have discussion with the participants of this online national training hosted by Junagadh Agriculture University College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry in Junagadh thank you and i thanks to the audience for patient listening and any queries you may clarify thank you after this this thank you no. dr sir is there any query regarding this topic to trainees mm. sir mm. to mm. the field control mm. mm. sir 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 to me the bolo jata hai the organizer se jata tano हेलो भैया हेलो भाई भैया आवर प्रिंसिपल एंड डीन डॉक्टर पी एस टाक सर तो फर्स्ट आई वेलकम हिम इन दिस सेशन हेलो डॉक्टर नमस्कार 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 गुड आरती सर मैं गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग इंटरेक्शन विद डॉक्टर गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर टैंक हां नमस्कार सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर अहिथल नाउ यस यू आर एट पुणे या एंड विल यू प्लीज ब्रीफ सम टेक्निकल एक्टिविटीज कंडक्टेड एट पुणे सो दैट आवर टीचर्स एंड फैकल्टी विल नो अबाउट योर सेंटर इफ यू हैव डन अर्लियर आई डोंट नो बिकॉज़ आई जॉइंड लेट ओके ओके आई 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 इंट्रोड्यूस सर इंट्रोड्यूस प्लीज सर उनका भी ब्रीफ नहीं आई हैव सर डॉक्टर अहिथल नो नो सर अहिथल वाज नॉट प्रेजेंट नहीं अभी कर रहे हैं Okay, sorry then. So I I I'll introduce while uh, this thing. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, now the same question. Ahir. Now same question to Doctor Ahir. Doctor <coughs> Doctor Ahir, Mapsu uh, uh, in Maharashtra is our adjoining state. And yes. Now the Veterinary Council of India internship in Ahir, other than the native state is mandatory. गाइडलाइंसिंगली वी टू विल वॉन्ट टू डेप्यूट 
our students for internship in nearby states especially the maharashtra so certainly that should be having mixture of both health and production component that is clinical practice also the farm practice so uh, to whom we should address the request for accommodating our intern students for a month we have already honored the request of dean of the shirward to accommodate your students in forthcoming february okay actually in our university the internship program started by 1st january then there was a meeting and uh, uh, it was decided the authority and the powers were given to the concerned associate dean of the constituent colleges to contact adjoining states for internship program for mutual program so i think bombay veterinary college they uh, contacted nowsari uh, nearby places so that the student from bombay mumbai will be sent to uh, gujarat then gujarat uh, students uh, reciprocate in the same manner they will be uh, undergoing internship at mumbai veterinary college or different institute in the mahsur so likewise uh, there was contact uh, from the concern associate dean of the concern constituent college and they frame they uh, perform some mou memorandum of understanding between these the two colleges so that it will be binding legally for both the colleges so a convenience for the adjoining states was given preferably to avoid the um, uh, movement of the students and that to in pandemic situation so that was effected from 1st january so again we may have mutual uh, understanding and we may contact uh, you can contact whatever uh, college you prefer in maksu you can contact directly to the associate dean of the college so that you may have uh, mutual mou or a mutual understanding to send your students from your side to uh, maksu and from maksu to your place and destination okay the second point is the students under internship are provisionally registered with state veterinary council say gujarat college students will be registered at gujarat veterinary council when they are sent yeah. one month to other state we have to provisionally or for a period have to permit them with registration of gujarat veterinary council to practice for internship at other state so how yeah. you are addressing this uh, issue there so oh, this issue should be discussed this is this was not discussed earlier also a very good issue you have raised because legally there are limitation there is, there should be transfer of provisional registration also likewise permanent registration we used to transfer from one state to another so here <coughs> vci has to intervene so this is national policy uh, internship out, uh, outside the state this is being uh, implemented first time so there should be excuse whatever concern registration with the concern state the student from uh, gujarat will register with the gujarat council and that registration should be permitted through his internship period in another states it should be permitted legally sir what uh, what i understand is actually we, that reg uh, registration is for graduates veterinary graduates there should not be any problem for the students uh, they are actually they cannot Sorry. practice as such they should be under that's why it is called the staff there yeah uh, certainly that's why it is called as provisional registration provisional registration that is not permanent provisional for that period and it is limited to that period only from this date to that date internship dates are mentioned and that exclusively for that period that provisional registration is there and it is to be surrendered and for permanent registration after getting clearance through the internship program after getting degree so at present uh, definitely present current interni students of the junagadh are undergoing internship at their respective nearby native place and some of the other state students are also sent either jammu lucknow Uh, Rajasthan and all. So we have special 
permission from both the states, Gujarat State Council as well as from the uh, Deputy uh, Council, that is Rajasthan and other states, that they have very specifically under special circumstances, COVID endemic permitted for this year only. But all the veterinary colleges to find some solution that the provisional registration in uh, around states, wherever they are deputed for one month internship uh, as an outstate internship should be permitted. So uh, this is this will be applicable to all because sometimes during internship also some vetro legal or other uh, problem, accidental problem comes. Yes, yes. Time, uh, though it may be rare, it needs to be uh, addressed appropriately. So uh, Dr. Ahir, you also being in administration, uh, look into the matter. We are also forwarding our concern to our state veterinary council yes. and veterinary council of India also. But uh, it needs to be addressed before they are sent. Certainly, certainly. This is a very good issue raised by you. Because you people sending students for internship, you are facing this problem. You are going. And the same will be discussed in academic councils. Earlier it was discussed, but nowhere there was discussion for this issue, that is uh, registration. After sending the students to the adjacent or other states, uh, the registration issue will be definitely, it will come, will raise afterwards. Uh, so very good point you noted. So we'll discuss and I will pass on information what decision will be taken in our university. I will communicate to you. Okay. Now I request Here, one or two. Now I request uh, Dr. B. B. Zavia, sir, co-chairman of this session, to thanks the eminent speaker. Uh, good morning, all of you. So after a very uh, elaborate session, here I would like to thank. Uh, first and foremost, all, uh, all the logistic support to organize this uh, particular session. Then, uh, especially, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Ahir, uh, who has given uh, a very nice presentation, including all the photographs and uh, different case study, uh, including imaging and non imaging technique. So we are from the College of Veterinary Science uh, and the United Agriculture University. We are very much thankful to you, sir, for providing your valuable time, uh, your precious time for the student of the student of our college, as well as for the faculty of uh, this veterinary college, United. So once again, we are very much thankful to you. Sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zavier. Hello. Now I will train and students. Now we will proceed for the next session. Uh, now I invite uh, learned personality and uh, a very good scientist uh, of uh, ARS, uh, uh, Dr. Hari Prasad Aithal.
So, I, I welcome Dr. Hari Prasad Aithal, who is the eminent speaker for this uh, today's uh, next session, second session. Uh, dear students, uh, it is a matter of great uh, pleasure that uh, you are giving, getting opportunity uh, to get information uh, from such an eminent speaker. So I will introduce first uh, regarding Dr. Hari Prasad Aithal. Uh, Dr. Hari Prasad Aithal obtained BVC degree in uh, 1989 from uh, US Bangalore, then completed MVC and PhD from IVRI. And he received National Merit Fellowship during uh, undergraduate, GRF and SRF in MVC and PhD studies. And he started his career as a scientist in IVRI and subsequently principal scientist uh, in the same institute. And uh, uh, he had uh, 27 years experience and uh, he had worked uh, with uh, as a principal investigator uh, in uh, different uh, 20 research projects. And he is having a significant contribution in particularly research areas and he has published more than 275 research papers. And uh, out of that, 75 papers published in renowned international journals. And uh, uh, regarding uh, 1,550 citations, and uh, most of the citations uh, in uh, more than uh, 20 standard textbooks. Uh, then, uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, he got uh, uh, he he had uh, guided five PhD and seven MBC students, and uh, he had worked uh, on particularly this uh, topic. And uh, for regarding uh, um, so many awards. Uh, uh, that uh, he got uh, so many international awards and fellow of uh, these particularly national academics uh, of particular veterinary sciences, fellow of Indian Society for Veterinary Surgery, Best Teacher Award, Dr. C.M. Singh Award, uh, Best PhD Thesis of uh, PhD, student, PhD student, Dr. Ra Ramkrishna uh, Oration Award, then particularly Dr. A.K. Bhargava Memorial Gold Medal Award, then particular this uh, base paper award, then elsewhere reviewer recognition. So number of uh, awards he got and uh, presently he is working as a uh, principal scientist in uh, IVRI. IVRI. There, is a, uh, uh, there is a center in particular uh, in uh, Pune uh, uh, as a uh, training and education center, ICR IVRI at Pune. So uh, it is good opportunity, uh, dear students, for you uh, interacting with such a uh, eminent uh, speaker. So I again welcome uh, Dr. Hari Prasad Aithal for this uh, session and he will deliver his session on particularly fracture management in uh, livestock and pets with special reference to epoxy peel, uh, external skeletal fixation technique. So I invite uh, Dr. Hari Prasad Aithal and I hand over this uh, speech to Dr. Aithal. Dr. Aithal, please. Yeah, uh, th thank you Dr. Savarkar for elaborate uh, introduction. At the outset, I thank the organizers, Dr. Talekar and uh, Dr. Tang, for giving me the opportunity to interact with you, especially the students. I love teaching and training, especially the students. This is an opportunity for me. Uh, for me.
hope you are able to uh, see the screen now yes yes sir okay okay uh, thank you the topic you see the fracture management in livestock and pets uh, with special reference to epoxic and fixation so mostly this you know the, the topic is very uh, vast topic so uh, though i'll attach each and every part uh, try to touch but uh, my concentration will be on this epoxy pin fixation and uh, i'll uh, go accordingly and most of the i think believe this uh, participants are students so i will also get into little little bit of introduction about uh, what exactly you know uh, is orthopedic and fracture what is a fracture actually fracture is a, any discontinuity in uh, the bone and also the cartilage so mostly we uh, refer it to fracture is mostly it is bones but even if the uh, crack is there in the cartilage that is also called as a fracture that is one of the common uh, orthopedic conditions nowadays it is encountered in uh, every part of for this thing we cannot you know uh, it cannot be prevented by giving any vaccines or anything like that it's mostly it is accidental so it has to happen when we have to deal with it so what are the causes of fractures you know the automobile accident that is the most common uh, cause of fracture uh, followed by fall from pie and uh, and trauma during distoke and handling that is also in domestic animals that is quite common but when it comes to the small animals the fractures are most common in femur and tibia and radius ulna fractures they are more frequently uh, seen whereas in large animals these lower uh, limb fractures like metacarpal metatarsal fractures and followed by tibia radius ulna fractures are most common uh, the proximal bone fractures femur and humerus fractures are less common and if they are seen mostly they are seen in young uh, animals now why do we require this classification of fracture the classification or description of fracture is only used when the classification is useful to provide a treatment outcome now we should know what type of fracture the, the, our treatment is mostly based on the type of fracture so that way that's why we should know a little bit about the uh, classification there are different ways of classification like you know based on the combination of fracture site with outside environment and based on the fracture line and based on the location of fracture they are normally classified this combination of fracture site with outside environment is very important you know in the sense when it is clo it's close fracture there is no comminution that is a close fracture when the skin is broken and the fracture is visible from outside then it is open fracture the close fracture treatment management is entirely different and open fracture is different so the first you should know whether it is an open fracture or close fracture secondly in if it is open fractures also it can be graded in a different way you know like if it is minimally soft tissue trauma is grade 1 if it is moderate in grade 2 and if it is severe trauma is there then it is grade 3 with vascular injury and uh, necrosis then it, it, that way it is it proceeds so the, if it is a very fresh case if you open fracture the treatment will be more easy and when the it is more comminuted and uh, then uh, more of injury soft tissue injury and nerve injury is there the complications will be more treatment will be uh, less favorable based on the fracture line again the fractures can be you know classified as transverse oblique or uh, uh, tra spiral fractures comminuted fractures multiple fractures impacted avulsion fracture overriding fractures this is also very important because when it is a trans transverse or slight oblique fracture the management will be you know it's like a simple intramural repair techniques can be used whereas in uh, long oblique fractures if you are going for intramural pinning then you have to go along with that circlage wire like that if it is a comminuted and multiple fractures there may be you know a fracture site a collapse will be there so you have to go for interlocking nailing or plating techniques so such classification uh, is important and based on the again location again they can be classified as you know mishard fractures and distal metaphyseal epiphyseal fractures supracondylar fractures intraarticular fractures like this because this is all important because the the treatment what we undertake it mainly depends on the location of fracture also now how to diagnose a fracture so you have been hearing about for the last two days the many uh, lectures about different diagnostic uh, techniques Uh, this is probably the first uh, lecture on uh, fracture uh, surgical technique 
So diagnosing a fracture, you do, you do not require very sophisticated uh, equipments like MRI CT is not required in it more than 95% of the cases. You know, clinical sign itself, non-weight bearing, you know, lameness, that is one of the, at a distance you can make out, the animal is not able to bear weight. It will lift its uh, leg. That is a sign that there is a fracture. If it is able to walk with full, full weight bearing, they, they, you can rule out the fracture. So you can say from a distance only you can make out that the animal is hand fracture. Now then swelling and angulation is also there. See, the swelling is more whenever the fracture is in the proximal bones, where they're covered with more soft tissues. Because for example, in femur or humerus, there will be more of soft tissue and no more swelling will be there. And perhaps distal bones like metacarpals and metatarsal fractures, so you may not get swelling because there is not much fracture. There is not much soft tissue. And angulation is also another thing. And normally the bone will be straight. If there is angulation, that is a sign of fracture. And the animal will carry the limb. That is the, that clinically you can make out. But why do you require this radiography? Radiography in 99% of the cases, you can, if the radiograph is good, you can diagnose a fracture. To confirm the uh, fracture, you have to have radiography. And also if you're going for any internal fixation technique, and this, how many, what is the side of fracture? What type of fracture, yeah, what is the extent of fracture line? To decide on the technique, you have to have this X-ray confirmation. And whenever you go for X-ray, not only in radio, uh, in the, uh, uh, orthopedic surgery, in any, you have to go for orthogonal waves. Otherwise, you may get confused whether there is a fracture or is dislocation is there or not. So always go for two waves uh, to confirm the fracture. Once you confirm it, so in the fracture, you see, first year is very important in uh, for the successful outcome of the fracture technique. It depends on how the how you animal is handled before you get gets into operation table, that will uh, affect the uh, outcome of the fracture. Because many a times, you know, the fractures are even in large animals, fracture will be close fractures. But because of negligence, and uh, there it may get the skin may get open and it may get compounded, get me infected. So the simple fracture may get become the compound fracture. So the treatment options will be less then the complications will be more. So the first thing you have to do is you have to go for first aid, post walking should be avoided and stabilize the fracture site temporarily using splint and bandage. That is four more, four more important. Once you stabilize it, there will not be any movement at the fracture site. Fracture fragments are not more and it will give a relief to the uh, animal from pain and also it will not become compound. So this should be the first step. And then there is no need to give any sedation, except in very excited animals, you may have to go for sedation. Otherwise, this first aid is very important. Then make the animal stand, especially in large animals. If the animal is actually recumbent for three to four days and four or five days, and it, it may not get up at all. So your first thing is you have to put the splint and bandage and make the animal stand. If the animal is able to stand in three legs, and maybe we will to walk, then your fixation outcome will be better. So first put the splint and bandage and make the animal stand and it will calm down the animal. And then you can think of uh, the definitive fracture fixation technique, what you can use it. And when before selecting the technique, you have to, uh, several factors you have to take into consideration. Like, you know, species. So you, for, for example, if it is a uh, uh, pet animals, so dogs and cats, any type of fracture can be treated. So whatever the technique practiced in human uh, orthopedics, you now they are being practiced in small animals. So all the all type of fractures can be managed. But if it is a fracture is in a horse or cattle, for example, spinal fracture in a horse or cattle, for example, maybe it's for even hip fracture, uh, that is very difficult to manage. So species is important. Location and type of fracture, I said, if the fracture is in the mid shaft of the bone, the treatment will be better. If it is near the joint, you have to provide more stable fixation so that there will not be any uh, large callus formation and there will not be ankylosis of the joint. Then whether close or open environment, any close fractures, if it is distal bones, you can manage with the plaster cast or any external technique. But if it is an open, open fracture, then again, you may not be able to go for external technique or may not be able to go for internal technique then you may have to go for external skeletal fixation. 
so open or close environment is important and body weight you know whenever the, is as the body weight is less fracture management is always like easy even in large animals if it is weight is less like it is a calf 100 kg 200 kg and it is it can be easily managed as the body weight increases 400 500 kg then the management will be more difficult and behavior nature of the animal you know that is another thing for example if you see uh, if you say the cattle and horses cattle is relatively a uh, no good orthopedic patient they are not that much as agile as uh, not as agile as large uh, equines so behavior is also important so management of fractures in equines is more difficult than when compared to the cattle and and facilities available you know you know many a times what happens the so called we talk of interlocking knee locking plates and everything so if we don't have the facility so that is no use so you have to use the technique whatever you have with the, with you and the experience of the surgeon is another important thing so you you say somebody may be very expert in a particular technique so it is uh, it is likely that he will have better uh, you know um, outcome in that particular technique rather than a new technique he is not well versed with it so experience also matters and the ability of the animal to walk and stand stand and walk that is especially in large animal even if it is a simple fracture animal is lying down for 6 7 days probably it will never get up so so that matters you have to if the animal can get up in three legs then you can try you can think of any technique and possible outcome of the fixation and purpose and quality of life is important for example if it is a, i can just give an example of a cow and a horse race horse the even if there is slight uh, you know uh, um, lameness even after fix, uh, healing it is not going to matter much for a cow it can give the milk but whereas a race horse if the lameness persists even after you know healing so it is no use so you have to th- uh, think uh, before going for fixation what is the purpose and quality of life after recovery that is required next one is comes to the economics yes we nowadays there are many owners they are ready to spend any amount for even for their animals that is mostly for pet animals but if it comes to the farm animals livestock so still economics is one of the main thing if the cost of the treatment exceeds the cost of the animal i don't think anybody will come forward to treat the, so whatever the technique we use it should be economical you know you know like you know for dogs where some practitioners normally for if it is a radius ulna fracture you can simply you can go for plaster sometime we fancily we go for locking plate and everything that is okay in some time in private practice or the owners are quite well off but if it is a poor man and there is if it can be treated with simple splint and cast there is no need to go for a locking plate a technique or interlocking nail like that so these things you have to consider before you really go for what type of technique see that's why the challenge fracture challenge of fracture management in animals you see unlike in human patients you know the humans whenever the, the fract, animal a patient is fractured so he is advised bed rest for so many days so he will take rest but our patients are not like that they need for immediate weight bearing once it comes out of the operation table once it comes out of the operation theater you should be able to bear weight on the limb so that is the challenge for us so whatever the technique we use so the animal should be able to bear weight on the neck so that is not the case in human patients so then non availability of implants so as you all know the many of the implants were what we use in today's orthopedic surgery in animals they are all developed for human patients weighing about 60 70 80 kg but they are okay for small animals uh, they are weighing about 20 30 kg they are quite good enough but our large animal patients like weighing about 300 400 500 kg so such implants they are not enough so there there, there should be specific implants need to be developed and so that is that is the challenge is the implants are not available for uh, especially for large animal fixation and then open fractures as i said you see most of the time what will happen in veterinary patients is we don't take care of the uh, case immediately so that will lead to open uh, opening of the fracture skin and it leads to infection it will come to you after 3 or 4 days with gross contamination so such type management of such fractures is difficult unlike in humans we take lot of care but not in animals and recovery from surgical fixation you know 
because anesthesia management in in uh, animals is different from uh, human uh, small animal practice especially in large animals in forced to buck animals but of course nowadays is the balanced anesthetic techniques they have improved the surgical outcome uh, of even uh, orthopedic patients so that is nowadays there are many uh, balanced anesthetic techniques have come and that has helped improve the recovery in uh, orthopedic cases so what is the principle of fracture management you know the uh, you all may be aware this bone is having the tremendous capacity for healing is a wonderful tissue bone is replaced by bone itself and when it heals unlike you no know, soft tissue soft tissues are healed by scar formation fibrous tissue formation bone is not like that but our purpose is you know like you know you have to uh what we have to do is our purpose here is uh, fracture treatment is we have to reduce the bone fragments and they bring it in, in, into alignment once they are, because whenever fracture occurs the bone fragments get distracted and they go away from each other and once there is a gap between the bone fragment there will be movement and there will not be bone going to heal so what if first thing is reduction I mean they have to be brought into near normal anatomical alignment because it is you see in a, a normal alignment 100% it is may not be possible especially in large animal but if you bring into near normal alignment that is enough this can be brought about by close method or open method close method means by traction and counter traction that is done whenever you are going for external fixation especially fractures are in the distal end distal uh, limb like metacarpal metatarsal fractures then you can go for a close reduction by traction and of course if it is a fracture is the humerus or femur there uh, the soft tissue is too much and there will be more of overriding is there you get you cannot reduce it by externally then you have to go for internal uh, reduction of course normally we go for internal fixation then reduction can be brought about by open method once you reduce the bone fragments then for fracture healing to occur you know you have to keep the alignment till healing occurs and there should not be any movement at the fracture site except for slight micro motion otherwise fracture site movement should be stopped and it should be kept in alignment till healing that is they can be brought about by fixation that's called a fixation you have to fix the fractures so that you can, there are different types of techniques you can use like mainly three type of techniques you can classify like external fixation internal like you know any cast for, cast application next is internal fixation like nails or plates uh, that is another type and third one is called as external skeletal fixation and i will come to it little later you know because i will not get into much about of whenever you do all these things preservation of the soft tissue that is very important the eight traumatic surgical technique uh, that mainly determines your fracture outcome because that's why in the external fixation the most commonly used is plaster and supply with bandages in, in young animals in small animals and plaster cast in uh, large animals so it is still it is being used heavily uh, extensively and lower limb fractures metacarpal metatarsals of fractures or even in radius ulna fracture because it is a straight bone you can go for plaster cast application in uh, animals now the late uh, the relatively new is the fiberglass cast has come that has replaced the uh, uh, plaster cast this is actually very strong and it is fast setting now within 5 minutes it is going to set so that way it is very strong and uh, you don't have to wait for one or two hours that is may uh, keeping the animal uh, in a recumbency for one or two hours is difficult so in such cases the fiberglass cast is very good and it is actually water impermeable also so and very strong so that way the fiberglass cast has the advantage and we have to go whenever possible we should go for fiberglass cast application the only limitation with this is the slightly the cost 
the cost is not of course it is exuberant uh, mrp is about 1000 rupees uh, there is lot of uh, you know uh, you think actual sale you will get it for 200 to 250 rupees you should know the actual cost then if you get it for 2 250 rupees that is not costly and the number of cast required is also less when compared to the uh, plaster cast because this is more stronger so less number of cast can be this thing so and you have, you have to have one saw for uh, removing the cast and while applic- applying you have to wear the gloves these are the only difference uh, when compared to uh, uh, simple uh, uh, plaster cast that is the latest technique it can be done very easily now coming to the internal fixation technique i will not go into very much detail you know what there is some improvement you know interlocking nails simple intra medullary pins technique is still being used but of course other techniques like cross pin and multiple pins stack pins they are still used but what is the advancement in this inter intra medullary technique is interlocking nail interlocking means the both the proximal and distal fragments you are putting one or two screws bolts so that there, there will not be any rotation of the distal fragment so there will not be any collapse at the fracture site if the fracture site is comminuted and that will help retain the bone fragments in place so interlocking nail is the latest mm-hmm. concept that is being for it is started since around 1980s and 90s in human patients and that is widely used in small animals now even interlocking nails are developed for even for large animal fixations like femur and tibia annular angular plates they are being uh, developed and they they have been used mostly in experimental studies and now uh, in within a few years it may come for uh, regular uh, uh, practice so ne- next technique is external skeletal fixation the third technique it is not external fixation or internal fixation what is exactly is external skeletal fixation you know that is that is stabilization of a debilitating uh, injury like fractures using percutaneous fixation pins they are connected outside the body to form a rigid frame you can see in this picture the multiple pins small pins are passed from medial to lateral in different directions and these trans fixation pins they are connected to some rigid frame outside the body this will have the advantage in the sense provide at stable and fixation as internal fixation at the same time it allows immediate weight bearing and also allows the wound to heal you know especially it is good in open fractures this concept is not new you know as old as 19, in 1897 in parkil he has developed this concept and later on early veterinarians like amer schroder and later they have used it and this is the being used in human and veterinary passive uh, practice for more than 100 years but the interest has a uh, renewed interest has been shown in recent years because of severe bone injuries and advances in the biomechanical studies and versatility of the fixators there are different versatile fixators have been developed and so that way the renewed interest has gone to this external skeletal fixation no in small animal practice it is widely used to treat fractures you know for fractures in arthrodesis in jo- that is uh, fixation of the joints and limb lengthening procedures you know, in humans like you know the uh, 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 polio like patients where there is angulation is there in there the angular defect correction and limb lengthening procedure it was used in small animal practice also it is widely used and it is now gaining popularity in large animal practice and although this open fracture repair remains a viable you know treatment modality recent uh, attention to minimal surgical invasion we all talk about endoscopic surgery and everything when we talk of uh, uh, soft tissue surgery and but when it is comes to the orthopedic surgery this external skeletal fixation is the minimally invasive technique yeah uh, least traumatic technique in the sense here we are not actually giving any incision at the fracture site we are passing the pin small, small diameter pin in the proximal and distal fragment and that way you are protecting the fracture site this is a minimally invasive technique as far as orthopedic uh, fixation is in concern and it allows the repair of some of the fractures that are unrepairable by conventional techniques so that is the advantage and long bone fractures where cast immobilization is not appropriate and does not provide optimal level of fixation 
Like for example, open wounds is there. You have fractures near the uh, proximal radius or proximal tibia, for example. There you cannot go for uh, plaster cast application because of the angular placement and everything. And such cases, open infected fractures where internal fixation is also not advised. Whenever you put an implant inside an in infected fracture, the implant gets may get infected and it will retain the infection for a long time and it may lead to osteomyelitis. But these external skeletal fixation techniques and the osteomyelitis is not seen because they, it is left kept open and for drainage and it will never lead to any osteoarthritis, uh, osteoarth uh, osteomyelitis changes. Even though there may be only pin track infection is there, but it will never lead to osteomyelitis. Commuted fractures, for example, in such that cannot be anatomically constructed, like you know, there will be crushing. Some of the time the fractures are crushed, especially in all you know, in, in whenever fracture is in uh, automobile accidents. Yeah, there will be crushing is there. In such of the crushed fractures, commuted fractures, that you cannot reconstruct anatomically by either by external or internal technique. And this external scatter fixation is very useful in such cases. And high energy fractures like soft tissue injuries, there will be so team with too much of soft tissue injuries there. Again, if you are going for internal fixation, you know, it is going to damage the soft tissue. So while you go, we are reducing the fracture, it is not only the fracture, uh, bone that is important, surrounding soft tissue you have to take care. If the soft tissue viability is not there, if the bone alignment is good, if it is not going to heal. All the uh, that vasculature and blood, uh, that is bone cells, they have to come from the soft tissue. So such high energy uh, fractures you can go for soft tissue injury and vascular compromise. This ESF is very good technique because you are not damaging, further increasing the damage at the fracture site. And other like, you know, stabilization of the joints. For example, if you have gone here, you've gone for Achilles tendon repair, then you have to immobilize the joint. In such cases, you can go for ESF techniques. And temporary splintage during healing of soft tissue, because soft tissue injuries sometimes near the joint, because of constant friction, it is not going to heal. In such cases, you have to go for, you know, uh, temporarily immobilizing the joint that will help heal the soft tissue and non-union and bo with bone grafts and corrective osteotomies like in this case corrective osteotomies in this case for example distal radius ulna though plating can be done but as, as you all aware this distal radius ulna is having very less soft tissue but if you're going for plating sometimes complications that open of the skin will be there so in such cases minimally invasive this uh, external fixation technique would be more appropriate. Like limb lengthening procedures, you know, for example, you see, as I said, in the polio like patients, it was used earlier. So you can go for osteotomy. And if you keep a gap, you know it always. If the gap is if the more than half of the diameter of the bone, it is not going to heal. But what here we are limb lengthening procedure is there will be gradual one or two millimeter distraction we bring about every every week. So there will be newborn formation, there will be continuous growth and continually we can keep on lengthening. So this is possible with only with these techniques and conjunction with internal fixation, humerus femur fractures, tibial fractures, only intramedullary pain may not give some sufficient stability, especially rotational stability. And such cases, ESF techniques again will help. And very short and proximal fragments like, you know, very short fragment, the hybrid fixation technique both linear and uh, circular component that can be used and mandibular fractures, maxillary fractures, lumbosacral fractures and even in fractures in you know, uh, wild and exotic birds, uh, mammals, uh, ESF techniques, they, they are very versatile and these they can be used. What is the advantage of any ESF technique is early return to function with the ex excellent mechanical properties. So, if, for example, if you go for uh, plastering the limb, sometimes it is not going to, whole limb is immobilized and animal will not be able to walk. Internal fixation also there will be like that. Here, you know, external skeletal fixation, only the joint which is involved that we have to immobilize. Otherwise, all other joints are free. So, animal can function, uh, return to function immediately because then you cannot immobilize the animal as I said. So, uh, this is the advantage of this technique you can use in animals. Ability to adjust the frame after bone fixation. Either if you put the plate, if there is any angulation is there, you cannot change the angulation. You have to remove the, again, you have to go for another surgery. But here you have fixed the proximal bone and distal bone. There is, if you see any rotation, 
even after bone fixation you can from outside only you can change the frame adjust the frame so that you can bring it into alignment and avoidance of surgical trauma i said because you are not putting any incision at the site and so that will help and avoidance of infection no imp buried implant is there and that way it preserves the bone stimulatory proteins they are normally secreted at this site of fracture so they are retained. when you give the incision all these growth factors and pro these uh, stimulatory proteins are lost but in this technique is a biological it allows the biological healing and anyway, it is a don't diversity of the design and versatility See, based on the fracture site you can devise it accordingly and preserves the bone length and alignment and ease of implant removal you know when you compare to internal fixation like plate you have to go for another surgery here it is not like that simply you have to cut the pins and just pull it out so implant removal is easy and provision for transarticular replication plate it is difficult to immobilize the joint whereas here if you want to immobilize the joint whenever a fracture is at the joint near the joint and you can go for transarticular fixation so and preserves the joint range of motion multiple application and reusability whatever the external component is there all these external components can be reused in another animal so that way the cost of treatment is less except for the pins all other components they can be reused this is not possible if you go for a cast application or internal plating and all that and provision for dynamization as i said you know micro motion at the fracture site it will stimulate healing if you have it is too rigid a fixation for example if it is very rigid sometime it may not heal then what you can do is you can remove one of the component one of the side bars and make it less stable and it will increase the movement at the site that will provide dynamization and it will enhance the healing this is possible with this esf technique now what are the different types of esf in the shape and configuration of the uh, frame then you can call it as a linear and circular designs and number of skins the surface penetrated you can go for either unilateral and bilateral designs and number of planes involved you can call it as any planar bi planar or multi planar design so these are the basic thing you know the like linear linear means you normally pins are passed from medial to lateral lateral side in any any bone that is the concept everywhere every time pin is passed from medial to lateral or lateral to medial not from cranial to caudal so in circular designs the here also the pins are here pins are crossed relatively small diameter pins are crossed of course crossing is always from medial to lateral or lateral to medial but then they are connected to a frame a uh, circular frame and hybrid means they have the concept uh, of components of both circular and linear components this is the base is what are the basic units that the fixation pins they are inserted into the bone to hold the major fragment that is the fixation pins and they are connected to external support in you know, the external connectors they support the bone there some connectors may be anything ring or anything like that and what is the linkage device between these external connectors and the pin they attach the fixation pin to external connectors this is the main three components of this you know and again on the basis of implantation you can call it as you know pins can be either you know half pin or full pin half pin is like so pins are passed from both the cortices but they don't come out of the opposite skin surface the mostly in the small animals radial ulnar fractures uh these such type of implants they are enough but when it is full pin means they are connected they are passed through and through both the cortices and they are brought out from the opposite cortex opposite skin then connected to another frame these are called as full pins these are especially if you are going for large animal fixation this half pin will never be sufficient and full fin fixation is done and these fins can be again smooth pins or it can be threaded pin smooth pin is normally used in circular fixation techniques when it is comes to the linear fixation technique it is threaded pins threaded again it can be centrally threaded or it is end threaded centrally threaded is useful for bilateral fixations and the end threaded pins they are used for normally like this you know that is thing uh, the unilateral fixation now pins can be either negative profile or positive profile what is this negative negative profile pins are the core diameter is less here the pins are the threads are carved within the core diameter of the pin a positive means it is the this uh, 
the threads are outside the core diameter of the pin this is very strong so all the fixation we should prefer this uh, the positive profile pins a negative profile pins will be weaker at the point junction of this uh, threaded and non threaded part so this was earlier used of course positive profile is always better coming to the connectors the connector can be made up of anything you know stainless steel titanium carbon fibers see uh, or aluminum this is of aluminum this is steel this is a carbon fiber and this is can be simple acrylic you know it can also be a connector the concept is that these pins should be connected strongly to a, to make a frame so all these are connectors and linkage devices these are the normally the ke splint and uh, most commonly used in small animal practice and human practice so they are the uh, different uh, uh, these are the linkage devices when it comes to the large animal fixation the cannulated or slotted bolts they are uh, through this the pins are passed and these bolts are fixed to the uh, rings and other miscellaneous equipments nothing like you know jack jacobs uh, hand chuck low speed electric drill always pins are passed through from electric drill not hand drill when it comes to external fixation technique unlike in uh, intramedullary uh, things intramedullary fixation in intramedullary pinning we should never use an electric drill we have to manually we, we secure the pin even if it is very strong for greater uh, 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 this thing whereas in uh, the, large animals yeah any external skeletal fixation techniques if you use a hand drill there will be wobbling and it will lead to migration and larger hole formation it will never be used and what are the general principles other equipments are only pin cutters and benders pin cutter bender and electric drill are the only uh, equipments needed and what are the general principle is general anesthesia general anesthesia is required in any orthopedic surgery because see we call it is a very we are passing the pins through and through the bone so that is very painful so always use general anesthesia especially in small animals of course in large animals sometime if we don't have the provision if it is a hind limb you can go for epidural anesthesia along with deeper sedation in fore limbs you can along with sedation you can go for nerve block and lateral or dorsal recumbency dorsal recumbency this is the best position you can lift you can tie the limb and of course it is not possible in all the places so you can go for lateral recumbency right prefer for aseptic surgery and always you know point one around skin incision is at the chosen site whenever you pass the pin they you have to give a small skin incision at the level of the uh, pin passage but these incisions are given from you know longitudinally from top to bottom not uh, across the skin because uh, vessels vascular damage and proper diameter pin is selected ಅಂಡ್ಲಿ <laughs> <laughs> and the small hole is pre drilled in the bone whenever before going for passing the pin you have to drill the side pre drill the side using a uh, drill bit is about 0.1 to 0.2 mm smaller than the diameter of the uh, pin itself that is for linear fixation techniques whereas when you are going for uh, circular fixation small diameter pins there is no need to go for pre drilling then pins are inserted always medial lateral or lateral to medial because avoid major vessels nerves and muscular attachments this is the safe corridors we call you can blindly i mean you can blindly pass the pin from medial to lateral but uh, uh, never use from cranial to caudal and pass the pin should be almost at the center of the bone of course if it if it is slightly here and there it is okay but always try to hold the pin hold the bone into between the two fingers and try to pass the pin in the center of the bone pins are introduced always using low speed you know drills and about 100 to 200 rpm is better 
because if you use high speed uh, drill there will be a lot of necrosis along the track because to reduce the thermal necrosis you have to use low speed drill and if there is any if it's stuck somewhere and you can withdraw it and you can wait for some time withdraw it and then again push back so and don't try to uh, speed the um, this one and high torque uh, you know the higher speed should not be used and drill in small pulses about 30 seconds if, we, if it is not going especially in large animals you wait for 30 seconds and again you drill it like that and drilling continuously flush the site at the cold saline because it is very hot when pin comes from the opposite end it is sometime it is very red hot to reduce the thermal necrosis that has to be done and at least two fixation pins whenever any technique just like you know you know plating at least two screws should be put in the proximal and distal fragment here also the same thing whenever you use any uh, esf technique at least two pins should be in the proximal fragment and two in the distal fragment and uh, minimum if the bone segment is small for example there you cannot use two pins then adjoining bone should be fixed then that means you have to go for transarticular fixation and pins rings you know should be spread along the length of the bone for example if the bone it should not be restricted to distal end if the bone is uh, fractured at distal end the whole bone should be uh, you know it should sp span the whole length like the plating if it uh, fracture is at the distal radius if you are using very small mini plate it is it will be subjected to more of bending stress and it may get bent so similarly here you should span the whole length and first first you fix the farthest pin adjust the frame before finally fixing the near bars and fix in connecting bars uh, their pins are fixed to connecting rod either through clamps nuts or anything that as i already said and circular fixation fixation wires and tension before fixing them for example when you pass the pin in circular fixator one side of the pin it is cut and bent and tightened to the opposite end then you have to tension it tensioned wire is about four times more stronger than untensioned wires and especially when you are using small diameter pins like 1 to 1.5 mm pins in such cases you have to tension the wires as so that will provide about four times better fixation stability and distance between the bone and external rod or ring should be minima you know how how much big uh, how, how far you have to keep away from the skin at least 1 to 2 cm it should be away from the uh, skin to, to facilitate uh, you know to allow the uh, swelling to occur and uh, dressing and everything but it should not be quite more away from the site if the external rings your rods are away from the fracture site it is less stable if it is more closer to the bone it is more stable so you have to use minimum distance by keeping at least about 1 to 2 cm distance between the skin and the side bar so these are the some of the see like linear fixation systems used in uh, small animals so like you know these fractures the radius ulna fractures normally radius ulna fracture it is used in four limb these are the fixations bilateral fixation techniques it was used in you know uh, in large animals you know like the radius ulna fractures distal radius ulna fracture see here deep uh, distal fragment was too small you could not we could not use two pins then you have to use two pins in the opposite yeah distal distal bone then you can immobilize this joint by immobilizing the joint you can immobilize the smaller fragment so that is the concept then you have to go for uh, stabilizing the joint like you know this is these are the fixations in uh, metacarpal metatarsal bone this metacarpal metatarsal bones are straight bones they are more suitable for linear fixation systems so can be managed even in dogs you know circular fixation can be used in dogs yeah these are these are uh, fixations used in large animal fixation techniques like metacarpal yeah, so metacarpal fractures yeah, radius ulna fractures you see the, that will provide very rigid fixation and it will allow these are all having open wounds so they can be managed by daily dressing and uh, drainage and dressing so animal can wear weight good fixation this will provide stable fixation whenever near the joint then you may have to use three four yeah uh, two third rings to avoid contact with the achilles tendon like that you have you can fix even in hind limb fractures metaproximal metacarpal fractures yeah distal radius uh, tibial fractures 
you have to use this you can maintain the angular angulation of the joint that is the advantage with this uh, external fixation technique see even in very large animals with distal tibial fracture so you can see animal ca uh, angulation is maintained animal can walk immediately after fixation it has led to good healing so i will not go much into the details of this linear circular fixation system because i want to just concentrate more on epoxy fixation technique what is the disadvantage of esf that is it is skin penetrate both soft tissues uh, between the skin and the bone may impair the function of the neuromuscular bundles and neuro neurotendinous units but of course if you are going for proper application technique this can be minimized pin tracks they are always kept open so they pin tract infection is quite common in uh, with esf of course pin tract infection is not it doesn't lead to any osteomyelitis they can be easily managed eccentric placement of esf sometime you know because it is in limb like uh, for example bones like uh, tibia the bone is not at the exactly at the center of the limb so in such cases it is difficult to align the uh, at the exactly at the center of the uh, circular rings so it may mal align and post operative care and management sometime difficult if you compare with the uh, internal fixation technique because they are all left open of course you have to go for daily dressing and uh, bandaging so what is epoxy pin fixation because i have been given this topic so because why i have talked about more about the external fixation technique is because ex this is also a type of external skeletal fixation what is you know acrylics and epoxy materials they used to connect the pins of the esf instead of the steel connecting bar because instead of steel these are used as external connecting materials this free they are called a free form fixation has the advantage that the pins can be passed it at any direction which are not influenced by the connecting bar or ring location as you have seen in linear circular fixation because whenever you pass the pin pin should be at the level of the bolt or it should be level of the uh, rings but here this is that's why it called a free form based on the fracture location or based on the situation you can pass the pin in any di any di direction they need not be in the same plane they need not be in the same direction even then you can use it and the diameter any di diameter pin can be used for example if it is circular fixation fixation bolt is there fixation bolt a uh, diameter diameter of the pin should not be more than the diameter of that hole present in the fixation bolt so that complications uh, problems will occur in that fixation here it is not like that any diameter pin can be used and used to treat fractures in small animals scars holes and with good success you know earlier this technique was used uh, used only in uh, uh, you know uh, very uh, mandibular fractures and uh, and in birds only but he now we have been we have developed the technique slightly modified the technique and we, uh, this technique we can use it in animals open fractures of in goats sheep dogs cows and foals up to about 100 kg sometime not even 100 kg even up to 150 kg you can if you don't have any other option you can go for this technique immobilization of joints by transarticular fixation can be done joint luxation tendon ligament injuries and arthrodesis this is also a type of esf technique it can be done and correction of the angular limb deformities like anti brachial deformities that can also this technique can be used what is the advantage of this acrylic systems this ability to contour the connecting bar to match the fracture configuration if if it is a linear metallic uh, side bar it is always either it is straight or it is circular here it is not like that for example you can contour to the shape for example if you want to immobilize the tarsal joint in a fracture is in the distal tibia and there you have to use angularly placed you can angle it as per the uh, angulation of the joint and you can do it fixation pins of any diameter may be used and fixation pins do not have to be in the same longitudinal plane i said they can be anywhere a light in weight you know live and compare to the metallic implants these are lightweight and early return to function whenever any weight is less so it is more comfortable to the animal and it can bear weight easily and placing the positive profile pins it is easy as i said positive and negative profile 
some of the fixation bolts in the standard uh, uh, implants they only negative like k sprints only negative profile pins can be used here you can use even positive profile pins and trans articular fixation is it is can be done and it is inexpensive system in the sense for example if you are going for linear circular fixation test system it will cost in thousands at least this is actually here acrylic you know some some like you know m seal you know in small animals even the cost of treatment may not be more than 100 to 150 rupees i can say it is so cheap now what are the instrumentation required it's also very very less the smooth pins they are called kristner wires of different diameter they are called wires if it is less than 1.5 mm they are called k wires you know the 1.2 1.5 2 mm pins are generally used in dogs and cats that is 1.2 to 1.5 pins in metacarpus and metatarsal bones we, we should not be more, we cannot use more than 1.5 mm pins in metatarsals of the dogs because the, there are four or five metatarsal bones they are very narrow and small diameter pin uh, uh, small diameter and you cannot use more than 1.5 mm pins and 1.5 to 2 mm pins in the radial sulna you can use and 1.5 to 2 mm in sheep and goats 2 to 3 mm pins can be in calves and foals weighing up to 100 kg based on the weight for example if it animal is about 40 kg calf you can use 2 to 2.5 mm pins animal is 50 60 kg 70 80 100 kg you can use 3 mm pins you cannot use may not be able to use more than 3 mm pins because it's difficult to bend and fix it and 3 mm pins can also be can only be used hence it is possible to use it only in relatively lightweight animals weighing about 150 kg and what are the other material yam seal you know regular or fast curing yam seal it is available everywhere so fast curing means you know once you do it within 5 to 10 minutes it will cure or uh, yeah it will you know fast um, uh, polymerize and it will become hardened in regular it will take about 40 30 30 to 45 minutes you may have to wait up to 45 minutes if you don't have time if you have the fast curing material and that is better will polymerize faster leading to quick hardening is applied about 200 grams to 1 kg m seal may be required as part of based on the size of the animal and location so this is like this and other thing you know this is the uh, this is the pin bend pin has to be bent uh, about 1 to 2 cm away from the skin so for bending this bender if you use it it is always better and the pin cutter and i said this electric drill you don't go for orthopedic drill not required it is very costly uh, they are uh, in in lakhs you know the cost in lakhs simple boss drill about 5 to 10000 rupees electric drill that will be sufficient uh, and you know adhesive tape these are the only materials pins pin bender pin cutter and electric drill this is all required now how to apply it before going for application go for survey radiograph radiograph orthogonal views i told already a fracture bone should be made and which will help determine the type and location of fracture and plan for fixation and decide the size and number of the pin what is the design so this you can x ray is required then go for anesthesia and restraint you see in dogs cats birds general anesthesia is used always sheep goats calves and foals you can go for deep sedation under general anesthesia or regional anesthesia Like if it is hind limb, we can go for epidural anesthesia. If it is fore limb, we can go for uh, blockage. An animal is restrained in dorsal recumbency with the affected limb suspended, as I shown in that figure, or lateral recumbency. If you are going for lateral recumbency, the the open wound should be facing towards you, you yourself, and that using a cotton uh, rope, you know, tight level of the digit or hoop, and suspend the limb. You bring the limb outside the uh, table. because you have to pass the pin through and through so it may be used to pull the limb and straighten it and manually help the fractures reduction and restraining the animal during the fixation now fracture fragment is repaired the limb is uh, repaired uh, prepared for aseptic surgery like you know any like hair clipping and scrubbing should be done and fragments are reduced and aligned by close method by traction counter traction which is easily achieved in metacarpus metatarsus all species and also in retinal fractures in dogs cats goats etc in some cases you know fracture is reduced manually by manipulation through the open wound 
for example if open wound is already there so through the open wound you can you can try to reduce the bone fragment sometime you may have to give it a slightly larger animal like 100 150 kg animal fracture is in the radius then you may have to give slightly enlarge that wound you now give a incision slightly above or distal to the wound and then giving incision reduce you can uh, reduce the overriding bone fragment because you don't have to give a long incision and reduce it and in many of the cases there is no need to give any incision you can reduce it like that and most fractures of the straight bones or manual reduction of the bone fragment severe overriding is there especially in fractures of tibia fractures of tibia it is very difficult to reduce the bone fragments then you can go for hemi surface wiring even if it is in dog maybe in uh, in sheep and goat even in cattle in even in large animals so i always use this hemi surface wires they will help actually reduce the bone fragment by tightening the wire you can bring the fragments together and and it will help to keep the alignment till you actually put a, uh, either any of the technique so the hemi circulate wire is very useful especially in fractures of the tibia if reduction is stable the skin wound may be sutured the for example simple interrupted sutures can be used if it is as i said if it is a very fresh case of compound fracture you can go for suturing and even in older cases also if there is lot of uh, a skin is exposed you can try try to cover the fracture site using the skin you uh, go for interrupted sutures uh, of course there should be gap between the sutures for drainage of in, in any case it is not possible for you to close the com- close the wound completely but this will help to actually cover the fracture bone with soft tissues and also it will help reduce the bone fragment keep it in alignment sir to certain extent so skin suturing should be done and after fixation of the sometime when it is not possible you can after application of the fixator you can do it it is slightly difficult you have to pass the uh, in between the uh, you know side bars and it is not advised completely close the skin wound suturing of the skin may help bring the soft tissue cover around the fracture site and also help secure the bone fragments in alignment until fixation application now how it is done fixation of pin proposed site of for transarticular passage of pins based on the radiographic evaluation are marked on the skin you have to mark it as per the fracture type fracture design and everything and small release incision you have to give i told you one to one or two m two small animals two to four mm is enough then bilateral fixations at least two fixation pins should be passed in medial laterally from medial to lat- lateral medial to lateral medial to medial lateral medial laterally okay or lateral medial on either side for example this is a like this if this is a unilateral uh, uh, uni uh, single pin unilateral fi- bilateral fixation because this is multiplanar fixation okay here it is crossed the multiplanar linear circular designs also the pins are crossed in the same plane because if it is right if it is in the same plane it will be better from cranio medial to caudo lateral and caudo medial to crane lateral direction or vice versa pins are crossed at a point of about angle of 60 degree or more see ideally it should be 90 degree 90 degree provides the greatest stability as per biomechanical biomechanics is concerned but it is uh, you know uh, in a, it is not possible clinical situations so if it is more than 60 degree that would be enough at least two point fixation is provided on either side of the fracture site increasing the number of pins will increase the fixation stability number of pins in, for example if it is a long bone you can use 3 and 3 in the proximal 3 and distal if it is in the exactly at the center of the fracture is at the center of the diaphyse if it is in slightly distal you may use three pins in the proximal fragment and two cross pins in the distal fragment like that and and uh, and use the maximum number of transcortical pins spanning the whole length of the bone and it will help distribute the load throughout the length of the bone fixation failure will be less chances and when fracture is at one end of the bone at least two pins are passed in the adjacent normal bone spanning the joint area 
pins are passed using low speed drill and continuously pour the saline and there if there is resistance while drilling pin should be withdrawn and redirected and intermittent drilling and small skin incision is also made on the opposite side of skin where it comes out through the opposite skin surface you have to make it give small skin incision otherwise what will happen that at the point of the exit that it will get burned and the later on the pin track sepsis will be more so if we give a release incision there will be less chances of issue damage at the exit point now how to construct the pin scaffold when all the transparticle pins are passed in the same plane they are bent towards the refractive side these are this is in uniplanar passed like this the proximal pin is bent downwards and distal pin is bent upwards and if it is a cross pins like this you know the, the uh, pins in the same plane the proximal pin is bent downwards and distal pin is bent upwards like this and you see where you have to bend at least 2 cm gap should be there between the skin and the side bar and that will help to allow the inflammatory swelling and dressing of the wound now bent pins in the same plane are they used they are joined using adhesive tape using a simple adhesive tape you can join it okay if the pins are long enough sometime what will happen in large animals yeah if the pins are not long enough so then you can take additional pins you can take the additional pin and join this side bar using this uh, uh, adhesive tape and one additional piece of pins can be used in multiplanar designer after joining them bent pins you know the these two two side bars on either side may be joined using the proximal and the distal ends you know what if you join this in the proximal and distal ends on either side this will help to provide greater stability because later on due to any even uh, uh, osteolysis along the pin tract and all that there are chances of translation of these pins pin may migrate like this once you join these proximally and distally and there is and they are crossed there is no chance of pin migration pin migration is not there fracture site stability is better there is no movement at the fracture site and if the side bars are long for example if they are very long i said for example transcarsal application like in hind limb in a tibial fracture additional articulation may be given between the side bar for example at the level of the joint intarsal joint again you can give another articulation like this so that will increase the stability alternatively all the four side bars can be joined like this using additional pieces of wires any wire can be used here need not be you know sterile even 6l stainless steel wire you can use anything and make a scaffold like this and then application of epoxy after making the scaffold interconnecting pins and pins the fracture site is checked for any alignment of the fracture fragments if there is slight mal alignment again you can check it here and it is possible to correct slight any defect is there you can do it once it is confirmed that fracture fragments are properly reduced and epoxy resin and hardener are thoroughly mixed and hardener should be thoroughly mixed to make uniform duff okay then the duff is applied along the pin scaffold and it should be the pin is inside and make is uh, that it is actually a uh, scaffold to the take taking the scaffold as a guide and by incorporating the bent pin within bent pin is there within now the side bars and the circular rings are constructed taking the fracture fragments in alignment keeping the fracture fragment in alignment you can reconstruct it and then you have to allow it for about as i said for 30 to 45 minutes if it is fast curing in 10 to 15 minutes it will become very hard once it becomes very hard you know it is very difficult to break it it is very very strong so the diameter of the side bars you no know, rings may vary you know depending on the size of the animal if small animals dogs cat sheep goat it is about 10 to 15 mm 1 to 1 and 1/2 cm thickness diameter is enough in cows and foals about about 100 kg 125 kg then 20 to 25 mm pin that is side bars are required and the surface of the side bar rings are smoothened using oily or waxy surface you can just use any oil or it can smoothen it but don't use water you should never 
allow any water even maybe a, even uh, the serum we have blood blood uh, it should not drop blood drop should not be actually uh, put on that and you just avoid uh, any water uh, application over that till it is completely polymerized completely hardens otherwise it may break epoxy pin construct is then allowed to set for about 30 to 60 minutes by then it would be become very rock hard and fixation is complete however during this time the animal should be completely restrained to prevent any inadvertent movement of the limb you know this is uniplanar for example this is a fracture this is open fracture in the proximal end of the meta uh, carpus in a goat no you can simply reduce straighten it by uh, fracture reduction is very easy in meta carpus especially in small animals uh, by uh, external you can do it then pass the pin medial to lateral this is about 1.5 mm pin in two or three in the proximal fragment three in the visceral fragment because this proximal fragment is too small here there is no need to pass the pin through this smaller fragment so once you immobilize this joint this fragment is immobilized so that's why you have to use two or three pins in the proximal bone you can do it and this is bent downward this is bent upward then you put this epoxy and that will provide very rigid fixation this is in a goat the cost of treatment will be more than not more than 100 or 150 rupees so like in multiplanar uh, fixations you know like you know pins are passed from crossed like this both in the proximal and uh, distal fragment this is medial side and lateral side the cranio medial to caudal lateral caudal medial to cranio lateral not cranial to caudal like this and pins in the same plane they are bent like then using adhesive tape we can just uh um, make a scaffold then after that you can apply this epoxy over it that you can see so in circular design same same thing is done and then proximally you can use one ring you can use any of the wire no just to make a scaffold then over that you can use this apply uh, apply this uh, m seal so that will be fixation will be more stable what is the post operative care you know animals should be allowed only limited weight bearing in the immediate post operative period See, though animal can stand immediately but he should not be allowed indiscriminate walking should not be allowed because you know here this is free form fixation you are not giving any tension in the pins like circular fixation it is pins are not tensioned that means they are not as strong as Uh, you know large animal circular fixators that's why they are good enough in animals weighing about only 100 150 kg not above 200 300 kg like that gradually more weight bearing can be allowed after one to two weeks in unstable fractures long demobilization may be needed to prevent any undue load on the fracture side regular antibiotic and anti inflammatory drugs you have to give and then you have to go for dressing at the side and fracture fixator components are regularly watched for example if there any change in the position of bending breakage of this uh, fixation pin is there you have to watch it and pin skin interfaces are regularly cleaned with antiseptic solution and also the open wound the open wound is there and it has to be daily addressed every 15 days you can go for radiographic examination till healing because this is easy one dog you can see it here it though it is a very small wound is there because you can see it how much soft tissue damage is here so you cannot go for plastering this animal you cannot go for plastering then if you can go like this you see the weight bearing immediately after fixation this much of weight bearing shows that how stable the fracture site is and there will be continuously it is now you see it is uh, still healing there was very good healing So this is another case you see you can see like this this there is soft tissue is too much damage you cannot go for plastering or you cannot go for internal fixation then you can go for like this and though the scar is there it is it is completely healed such you see such fractures they cannot be used uh, cannot be treated with any other technique see this is one other very very horrible case with complete you know tarsal luxation and uh, necrosis of the joint almost so in such case you see it was reconstructed you clean it nicely and go for suturing then i see see this is after 11 days 
immediately it is only after love and animal can walk like this see this is another fracture of proximal you know tibia this was a complication of plaster cast this was somebody has applied plaster cast and it was not seen later and it has become like this so this such necros fractures is associated with any other technique and this is you see this epoxy what applied and except for slight sloughing of the hoof and it could completely recover animal can now we, we can salvage the you know, protect the whole limb is it was protect only except for slight necrosis of the uh, sloughing off of the hoof uh, otherwise everything was fine you see this is a, this is another fracture common fracture fracture luxation of the tarsal joint so again you cannot go for plastering here if you go for plastering or if you keep a window here and actually near the joint keeping a window in plaster it will reduce the strength and also fixation will not be stable then you keep it suture it and then go for this circular design we have done it see angulation angulation of the limb was maintained and you can uh, animal can walk nicely and you can remove the pins later this is in another yeah, case of you know tibia as i said you see it is very reduce, difficult to reduce tibial fractures even if it is a small animal then you can go for hemicirclage wires this hemicirclage wires will help bring the fragments closer and then you apply this technique and it will be enough this is an acrylic this is dental acrylic see dental acrylic is liquid so then you have to have any pvc pipe like this any pipe can be used otherwise technique is same and this pipe is fixed first then it is poured into this and animal can you see immediately after that is animal can walk nicely this is one correction of this angular deformity this is this old case of maybe fracture so unilateral you can see the angulation is there and this was immediately after fixation it was a straight it was completely see here that's what i said it is minimally invasive distal radial of fracture so soft tissue is less so plating will be slightly difficult so this is a better technique this was in a goat you know this distal radius uh, radius fracture you see and this is this is very good for uh, small ruminants the owners cannot afford a costly treatment uh, hi fi treatment this is this will not cost more than 150 200 kg this is a multiple fracture see, as you have seen in that lady you know that radius and everything metacarp everything is fractured here the fracture of radius and metacarpal bones together it is there and the skin is almost necros so what you can do is suture it and leave space in between apply this and you see like this small diameter pins you can use it and animal that limb could be saved so this this is distal radius ulna fracture in a calf you know so this was very close to the joint that is why transarticular fixation was done healing is then you see this is in a this is in a goat so proximal metacarpal fracture simple this is you know here we have used in a hybrid fashion see here in the uh, metacarpus pins are crossed here in the digits here pins are single pins are used medial to lateral so any shape can be see this is the versatility of the technique you have to join it and when you are passing the pin be careful not to enter the joint it can be very near to the joint here also you see inter digital uh, joints also and you should not enter the joint you can pass one or two pins in the first phalanx and one pin in the distal phalanx so you should not enter the joint this is what you have to take care that can be easily done so this was in another a proximal metacarpal fracture of in a goat you see this is the Uh, met, uh, metatarsal fracture this is in a pole see here this distal fragment is small you can pass one cross pin in the distal fragment again this pin should not be you, you try to you should not enter this fracture site and you should not enter the joint that is what you have to take care this was in the first phalanx this was circular fixation you know it looks good also is a distal metatarsal fracture in a calf This was a uh, metatarsal fracture. You see, it was necros. Bone is necros. 
a large you see and you see can see it the same case there is about 25 to 30 mm of the bone was lost it was not there we could not bring the fracture site closer of course because it was a very infected fracture we could not use any graft but to to our surprise you can see after 15 days and after 30 days and after 45 days in spite of having this much of gap there was newborn formation there was newborn formation and animal became normal and you can see this dead bone will act as a bone inducer whenever bone is dead you don't have to cut the bone you don't trim the bone in such cases because they will help they will help reduce the bone if you trim it there will be more gap if the gap is more chances of healing is less then don't trim this dead bone for example again here this is a dead bone don't trim it you clean it nicely and put it inside and then suture it and then put this here what will happen this dead bone will act as a graft this will help in induce the newborn formation and once newborn is formed this dead bone will get detached from the host and then later on it will be it will you can actually uh, remove it okay and of course it, it is required till that newborn is formed so this is another case near the joint like this you know so such such fractures this is again distal metatarsal fracture this is in another fold See, this was again, see, necrosis yeah, yeah, yeah. But you clean it nicely and bring the fragments together and then close it. Because this closure yeah, will help reduce the fragment. You keep the keep it in alignment and go for this type of fixation. Even animals weighing about 100, 120, 120. Yeah. See, this is in another metatarsal fracture, in a uh, proximal metatarsal fracture in a car. So if there's sometimes the bone is clean, you can also keep the bone grass. So you can pass the small diameter pins within this and it will help uh, keep the frag bone fragment. This was a trans trans transal application, proximal metatarsal fracture. You see, whenever the fracture is near the joint, also there was healing was good. Except for slight malunion, of course, there was no <laughs> joint was involved in this. So this is one. This is in a crane. You know, the, both the tarso metatarsal bo bones are broken. Both the, in such cases, very small diameter pins, 1.2 mm, mm pins, they can be used like this, and uh, it is very good in uh, wildlife. This is for in a cat for joint immobility, at least tendon rupture. For that. He can he can actually immobilize the joint using this trans this is epoxy fixation. Now how to remove it? Once the radiographic healing occurs, fixator assembly is removed by cutting the pins between the pin and the sidebar. Very simple. Cut it and then cut ends of the pins are pulled out using a plier and the pin holes are flush with using antiseptic solution. After removal of the fixator, limb may be provided with uh, some additional support with splint and bandage for one to two weeks to prevent any untoward effect. Okay, this is all about that. What I conclude is this fracture repair okay. has made tremendous advance in recent years, especially in small animals, but it remains a challenge to treat fractures in large animals. You no, know, and this risks and benefits should be thoroughly analyzed before choosing a technique. You know, it is a tough time task to repair yeah. fractures, uh, especially of those associated with the upper yeah. limb, part of the limb, including that of tibia yeah. in large animals. Yeah. Management oh, of yeah. fractures in the, is very difficult in tibia, yeah. especially in heavy animals. And ESF is very versatile and has several advantages. Yeah. And it is particularly useful yeah. to treat open infected fractures, yeah. both in small and large animals. And while standard ESF designs are available in the market for small animal fixations, large animal fixators are not readily available. And but this epoxy fixation is very simple, effective and economical method. And it can be constructed as per the demand of the case to treat open fractures in small animals and also in young calf, cattle and poles. Even in simple fractures that can be Manage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
and about uh, the i just want to take 2 minutes about the center our center is actually training and education center of ivri it was started about 4 to 5 uh, years back in pune so our uh, main mandate is training and extension so we actually organize different trainings for veterinarians yeah, and also for farmers on different areas and i am glad to say this this fracture fixation techniques for last two or three years we have conducted about 8 to 10 uh, uh trainings at least two to three trainings every year uh, uh based on the demand this year of course because of this covid uh, situation we could not manage otherwise and at least 100 to 20 to 150 veterinarians uh they have been trained in different aspects especially in uh, orthopedics and different internal fixation techniques external fixation techniques uh we do about 10 to 15 uh, trainings we take every time and hands on training is given what is happening is in see in field veterinarians mostly they do all the surgeries including diaphragmatic hernia surgery in uh, field level but when it comes to the orthopedic surgery they don't normally do they don't go beyond a plaster cast application in many many times some of the private practitioners of course they they, they do very good surgery i i can tell you like places like pune and bombay but of course general veterinarians who are practicing veterinarians they don't get chance to get trained under their you know guidance because they are practitioners so the training is required because the orthopedic surgery is not uh, taught much in uh, undergraduates they can do any of the training with little bit of training and these surgeries most of the surgeries can be done in the field level so thank you very much for your patient uh, listening thank you if you have any questions or any doubts you can please can uh, ask please student please any question it is very nice presentation given by dr aithal sir any query any question from student undergraduate student final year internees pg student those who are really interested to forward the career in orthopedic side please take the advantage of dr ethal sir your teaching is so nice so students they have no questions i think no it is bo- both way no either it is nice or it is it is beyond there you know it is it has gone over it no <laughs> it can be anything but if they have any doubt they can ask any time no it's because it is very difficult to uh, they may have individual uh, customized problems uh, they can ask any time and uh, and training also yesterday also uh, it is being done in orthopedics uh, ivri is conducting training and sometime even the pau people are doing and in madras in madras also sometime they do it we at this our center we regularly uh, because because i am there i uh, normally we take orthopedic uh, trainings one uh, two or three trainings every year whoever is interested they are most welcome sir uh, in this aspect we definitely you know try for uh, and uh, request to the gujarat veterinary association to take the advantage of your you know institute yeah the- that's true uh they can be done you see uh, if any state government or any department they are interested they can write to us our uh, in charge and uh, we we can arrange training maybe uh, on this spot also we can arrange uh, if they can arrange at the uh, their level uh, we can go there and also we can uh, demonstrate the techniques uh, last year uh, for gujarat veterinarians we have arranged the laparoscopy and endoscopy with the help of madras uh, bombay veterinary college uh under ascad uh, training program they had asked for uh, the laparoscopy and endoscopy training that we arranged along with the bombay veterinary college for uh, gujarat uh, field veterinarians 
similar okay. any training can be arranged even in orthopedics if they wish uh, they can we can do it so we can try with the consent in you know, a college so that would be great yeah it it can be done it can be done okay. thank you thank you very much sir thank you thank you i have a request to dr cm modi my colleague and assistant professor right. uh, to give a word of thanks Uh, thank you very much, sir, and uh, for excellent presentation and giving the very good information about your topic and uh, capture management in livestock and pet with special reference. Uh, it is very ideal and basic, basic presentation about your topic. Uh, means your lecture is very palatable and digestible. Uh, and it will be benefit to participant for the advancement of knowledge and research. It uh, very good is or no, sir. We can also people who have knowledge give the your lecture. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. I also thank you, uh, thankful to the doctor Tarika sir, organizing secretary. I uh, also thankful to the doctor Sarvata sir, he is the chairman uh, for the. Being with us and uh, also thankful to the uh, student for the technical and handling all the things. Uh, thankful to all the support from the teams. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and uh, this is a we have a lunch time and we will meet at uh, we will resume at four o'clock for the next session. And uh, one de practical yes. demonstration we will conduct at four o'clock. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Sir. Thank you. Sir. Are you Dr. Ravi?
So, very good afternoon, dear students and trainees, for uh, afternoon session of second day uh, of this uh, training program organized by Department of Surgery and Radiology. <coughs> uh, this session, uh, for this session, the topic is therapeutic and surgical management of uh, prepicial prolapse in gear holes. You know that. Uh, how wool is very important for uh, particularly collection of semen. So I think that this lecture will be very fruitful for your knowledge and information. So for this uh, particular topic, uh, we have eminent speaker from our college, Dr. Jignesh uh, Vadalia, sir, who is uh, working as an assistant professor in, in College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry. And he has completed his graduation from Anand Agriculture University, Anand, PhD from our college. And he has served uh, in department as a head of the department for a few years. Uh, then uh, he is also member, life member of particularly uh, Indian Society for Advancement of Canine Practice. And he has published more than 20 articles at national and international level. And he is also author of two books. Small and Large Animal Surgery, published by J.U. Zunagad. And he, he has successfully organized five uh, ASCAD training program, which are specially organized for particularly veterinary officers of uh, uh, Gujarat state. And he has developed uh, department. Uh, he had made, uh, contributed a lot to developing uh, various equipment for the department. And uh, he's uh, uh, providing various uh, uh, technical uh, expert services uh, to the farmers and stakeholders uh, through this particular department and from particular college. So again, I welcome Dr. Jignesh Bhai Vadalia uh, and uh, uh, I hand over this guy uh, to Dr. Vadalia, sir. Okay, Dr. Vadalia, sir. Welcome, Please. doctor. Welcome. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Very good afternoon to chairman, co-chairman, organizing committee and the all the uh, attending members. So today, so today we discuss about the therapeutic and the surgical management of prequisal prolapse in gear bulls. If we discuss nowadays about the animal husbandry, then the first name is the, especially in the cattle population, is the deer. We can say the deer is the pride of India. It is also a pride of the Saurashtra, Gujarat, and India. The deer, we also, we all know, the deer breed has changed the economy of the Brazil. So the, the breeding bull of the deer is the most important as for their, the breeding purpose as well. The deer breed is known for its uh, milk production capacity. It's a docile nature, it's a loop, and the for optimum productions and the reproductions of any breed, or especially in the deer breed, the male is the more important. And anything related to reproduction in the bull is a serious concern. So deer bull are more prone to its prequisal prolapse due to its the anatomical uh, makeup as well as the breed characteristics. The prolapse, the, if we discuss about the, what is the prolapse, it is a simple thing. There is the aversion of the inner lining of tibules to the environment and which is not comes its normal position normally, which is called uh, prolapse. The failure of the extension and the retraction of penis and the prepuce by breeding group is a matter of serious concern it related to the breeding. We discuss about the etiology. There are the multiple etiologies. The most common etiology in the gear for the prequisal prolapse is traumatic injury. And traumatic injury, which followed by the secondary infections, contaminations, and the inflammation. The breed characteristics or the anatomical makeup of the breeds is also play an important role for the prequisal prolapse. Two pendulous and the loosely attach the seat. If we see the distance between the tibus orifice and the abdomen in naval region, it is 
larger in size as compared to the brains the opening opening of the prefusal orifice is larger as compared to other breeds which predispose which prone to prefusal prolapse in their bone the attachment of seat to the body in navel region while prefusal orifice many times the agenesis or the atrophy of the retractor prefusal muscles are seen and which is also a uh, one of the cause for the prefusal prolapse in navel bones the eversion of prefusal skin is common in all the navel breeding bulls due to its the breed character its docile in nature is larger in size as compared to other larger orifices and once the eversion normally the eversion of prefusal seat is same due to the seat comes in contact with the air it become dry once it become dry it is more prone to trauma contaminations and the infections so if we see about the nature of the gear so gear bulls are the docile and they are working with loose genitalia and once they are working with the loose genitalia the predisposed the aortic prefuse for the trauma and it is commonly seen at the time of the standing walking grazing etc if we discuss about the sourash region the environment of the sourash region is the hot and humid and this hot and humid environment prefuse protruded prefuse to the hard object or this traumatic injury due to the rubbing and the uh, striking by the tail which from the sourash region so in the sourash region they have the culture that every village have their own gau salas every village house or more than 50 cows and they are keeping one bull only so this bull will be overused in that village and the gau salas and due to the Please continue. Okay, sir. Hello, sir. Meri awas aa rahi hai na? Yes, yes, yes. You please continue. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So now we discuss about the different degree of the prefusal prolapse in bull. It is classified into four degree: prefusal prolapse, first degree, second degree, third degree, and the fourth degree. And all have the different types of the. Doctor Vadalia, 
Please share. Yes, sir. Please share your screen. Yes, sir. I am sharing, but. Okay, now visible, sir. Yes, yes sir. So, in photographs, you can see the first bulls of with refusal progress, but it is. First degree prepuzal prolapse, which is very common in all gear breeding bulls. This prepuzal prolapse is without any edema, laceration, necrosis, and fibrosis. Means there is no any pathology in first degree prepuzal prolapse. And this is very common in all gear breeding bulls. It is very common in all gear breeding group. But this may convert to the pathological prepuzal. Prolapse. So the first degree prepuzal prolapse is a non-pathological prepuzal prolapse. Now the second degree prepuzal prolapse. So in second degree prepuzal prolapse, there is a mild edema, superficial laceration of the prepuce, but there is an absence of the necrosis and the fibrosis. So in photographs, you can see the bull suffering with second degree prepuzal prolapse with mild edema and superficial laceration. Now, in third degree prepuzal prolapse, the bull is suffering with the severe edema, deep, lacros, uh, deep lacerations, mild to moderate necrosis, and the mild fibrosis. The fibrosis will start in third degree prepuzal prolapse. Now, in photographs, you can see the elephant trunk line appearance and the bull suffering with fourth degree prepuzal prolapse. The symptoms of the fourth degree prepuzal prolapse is the severe edema, deep laceration, severe necrosis, and the fibrosis with or without abscess. There may be or may not be present abscess. So the prepuzal prolapse are categorized into four categories first degree, second degree, third degree, and Fourth degree. The incidence, the non pathological prepuzal prolapse, means first degree prepuzal prolapse is common in all gear breeding bulls. In all breeding bulls. Whereas the pathological prepuzal prolapse is common in 14 to 20 percent gear breeding bulls. So the prevalence of pathological prepuzal prolapse in gear bulls is 14 to 20 percent. Whereas the first degree prepuzal prolapse is seen in all breeding bulls. Now the clinical examination. So how can we diagnose the cases? So diagnosis is based on the clinical signs and symptoms. In simply, we can notice this is the first degree, second degree, third degree, or fourth degree with different symptoms. And the diagnosis will be supported by the ultrasonogram. Based on the gross examination and the symptoms, we can easily diagnose the bull suffering with the second degree, third degree, fourth degree. But ultrasonography is also helpful for diagnostic techniques to detect exact the degree of the prepuzal prolapse. Bull suffering with the second degree, third degree, fourth degree, etc. So here you can see the bull control it is the trails in standing position and perform the ultrasonography and detect the fourth degree prepuzal prolapse with hyper echoic structure. The, it is seen in the uh, sonography machine screen. So in video, you can see the ultrasonography of prepuzal prolapse. First, bull restrain properly restrain into the stravis in standing position and then go for the ultrasonography of prolapsed mass. So, this ultrasonography is helpful to differentiate the different degree. Is there presence of the edema, necrotic tissue, or the fibrous tissue? So, this will help to differentiate these things. Doctor, your video is not visible. Hello. Hello. Your video is not visible, sir. My video is visible. Visible, not visible. Video. USG MP4. Ah.
Okay. The video is not visible. No, no. You click it. Okay. Yeah. So in screen, you can see the ultrasonography of the prolapsed mass. So there is a accumulation of fluid into the subcutaneous structure. So the hypoechoic structure which is indicate that the accumulation of fluid. So it is helpful to detect the second degree trapezoidal prolapse or differentiate the different degrees. Now in second uh, the hypoechoic structure or nodular mass, which is clearly seen in image, which indicate that there is a presence of necrotic tissue and the mild hyperechoic structure is also visible, which indicate there is starting of the fibrosis in prolapse mass. So it is commonly seen into third degree trapezoidal prolapse. In image, the hyperechoic structure is seen, which indicate the bull suffering with the severe edema, necrosis, and the fibrosis means it is fourth degree trapezoidal prolapse. Now, after the detection of the trapezoidal prolapse, the bull can be managed by two methods: therapeutic method or the surgical amputation of the prolapse mass. So, bull with suffering with the acute inflammation and the second degree trapezoidal prolapse, they can be managed by therapeutic management. In that cases, there is acute inflammation, severe edema, but there is a minimal fibrinous reaction seen in the tissue so, and the absence of the adhesion of the prepuce layer. So this type of cases can be managed by therapeutic management. Such type of cases, in such type of cases, the instituted the antibiotic and the analgesic for the five to six day age for the depending on the severity of the cases. The prolapsed mass can be dressed with a 5% povidone iodine solution and the dosing can also be done by using the povidone solutions. So we see the some in first photographs we can see the bull suffering with the second degree trapezoidal prolapse. And this bull managed by the therapeutic management and after a few days, the bull complete recovered. In second photographs, we can see the bull complete recovered. So again, the bull suffering with the superficial lace mild necrosis and the edema in second degree. And this bull also managed by the therapeutic management for five to seven days age for the depending on the requirement of the cases. And this is the after the photograph shows the bulls after recovery. In photographs, again, the one bull suffering with the second degree and which is also managed by therapeutic management. This is the recovered bull from the typical prolapse. So during the therapeutic management, the bull should be kept loose in a palm with a chakra. Once we keep the bull on kacha floor, then they have loose, then they have to choice to sitting on the dry floor. And the another benefit of the kacha floor is it is easily absorbed the urine. So it remains dry most of time. And that's why it is helpful to minimum complications after the treatment. A majority of bulls are preferred to sit on the dry floor, but if we keep the animal in stall feeding, uh, sorry, in stall feeding and on the pakka floor, then especially in the night time, the floor became wet due to the urination and the defecation. And this is the more prone for the secondary bacterial infection due to the contamination of the urine and the dung. That's why if you keep the bull on the kacha floor and we, and this kacha floor has on the recovery. So this is the remain same for the therapeutic management as well as the surgical management. And these bulls are given 60 days sexual rest to prevent the reoccurrence of the prefusion prolapse. Another techniques by which we can manage the prolapse is the surgical amputation of the prolapse prefuse. So for the surgical amputation, the preoperative preparation is required. So for can image in first photographs you can see this is the refusal prolapse and this is the contaminated parts 
we this part have the dung, urine, dust, necrosis tissue, etc. So before going for the surgery, clean this part is most important. So this is the photographs after the cleaning of the prolapse mask. Anesthesia. So majority of ruminants we can manage by this sedation. So xylazine is the most appropriate anesthetics for intravenous the xylazine to con sedate the patient and then restrain it into lateral recumbency. For the loss of sensation or the loss of pain during the surgery, we use the ring block above the skin prefusal junction. This is the skin prefusal junction and this is the ring block by using the 2% lignocaine hydrochloride just above the skin prefusal junction to achieve the analgesia or to loss of pain during the surgery. So video is visible. Video is not visible, sir. Video is not visible. So anyone can help me for solution of this. The video is not visible. Okay, in last we will see all the video one by one. Now the restraining of the bones. Restrain the bone in lateral recumbers in such position that there is the maximum exposure of the surgical site. So both the handling tie the behind and the forelay in front. So there is a maximum space for the surgical operation. Now the surgical procedure. So the preparation of the surgical site by the shaving of the heads is required. So in photographs, you can see the saving of hair from the surgical site. Then the scrubbing of the prolapse mask and the surgical site is required for the aseptic surgery and the preparation of the surgical site. The dosing of the prefusal cavity with the povidone iodine solution. Dosing with povidone iodine solution before going for surgery. So video we will see last. Now then there are two to three methods which is used for the imputation of the prolapsed mass and is the circumcision technique, modified circumcision technique, refilling technique. So we will discuss one by one circumcision and modified. The site of incision, mostly the majority research article indicate the site is the skin prefusal junction. So here is the skin prefusal junction. But the skin prefusal junction, the site of the skin prefusal junction is more prone for the post operative complication, especially the stricture formation. So I prefer the site of incision below and beneath of the skin prefusal junction. Below and beneath of skin prefusal junction. And circular, a circular incision is put over the skin and cut the tissue one by one. So first is the put the skin circular incision below and beneath the skin prefusal junction, then apply the RT4 shape to control the bleeding. And after that, the ligate these blood vessels by using the two chirochromic catheter and impute the prolate mass. The end of the inner layer of the prefusal, which holding by the two Ellis tissue forceps, and then Take the sutures of the outer layer of the prefuse with inner layer and including the middle elastic layer. So in photographs, you can see the suturing of the outer layer, inner layer and the elastic tissue, middle elastic tissue. And the white nail zero number is used for the simple interrupted pattern of the suturing of the surgical site. The photographs show the surgical wound after complete Suturing. 
So this is photograph also complete surgical wound after the suturing of the inner and the outer layer of the tissues and the penis. Glance is come out, it is relaxed. That's why it's come out from the particular orifice. This is the effect of sedation, gyrating. So this whole video we'll see one by one last week. The second technique is the modified septum system technique. In this technique, the main difference, the site is remain same. The circular incision given below and beneath of the skin trifugal junction and dissect the all the tissue slowly, slowly. The main difference is put a V-shaped incision over the caudal surface and the tip of the V should be remained towards the scrotum. So, once we remove this, we put the V-shaped incision on the skin that will help to enlarge the diffusion orifice. So after the suturing, the diameter is increased due to the V-shaped incision on the posterior outer border and the tip of V should be always towards the scrotum. The post operative management. <laughs> So the post the post operative management, the antiseptic dressing of the surgical wound is required for five to six days or up to the complete healing of wound. In photographs, the wound is clean by the beta D and the antiseptic dressing is performed. The loosening of the prefusal cavity is also required with the poidal iodine solution after the surgery. In photographs, you can see the restrain the bone in standing position into the travis and the give the loosening to the prefusal cavity with poidal iodine solution. The application of the abdominal sling post operative is the most important thing because sling keeps the prepuce into the horizontal position. So, this horizontal position of the prepuce will help to reduce the post operative inflammation. It will prevent the post operative contaminations by the dirt, dung, urine, etc. And this will help for the faster recovery of the surgical wound. So this is the second day photo of the um, trifusal prolapse surgery. This is the seventh day photo means the wound is healing with minimum complications. This is the sutures are removed on the 10th post-operative day and the wound is of the 10th day. This is the 14th day of the wound. Now there are multiple post-operative complications are seen in prefusal surgery before it is remained on the ventral part and there may be more chances of the secondary infection and the contamination. So the swelling is the most commonly seen post-surgical. So in photographs, we can see the mild swelling at the surgical site. Here also we can see the mild swelling at the prefuse or the surgical site. Suture infections. Due to the sutures comes in contact with the urine, there may be chances of the infection. In photographs, we can see easily the suture infection of the sun sutures. Again, it is the suture infections which is seen in the photographs. Again, photographs show the suture infections. Wound dehiscence. Wound dehiscence is also a common complication which is seen after the swelling. Here in photographs, it is easy to see the wound dehiscence. Yes, due to the wound dehiscence, there is separation of the some parts of the skin and the refuse layer. And this wound will be healed by scar tissue formation. 
So again, this is the wound dehiscence photographs. This is the complications of the precursor surgery. This photographs is also so a wound dehiscence. Anaerobic infection. Sometimes the anaerobic infection is also observed elemental swelling at the precursor orifice and the precursor. It is seen in the precursor and precursor orifice. So the bull, this is the photo of the whole bull, and the, we can see easily the anaerobic infections of precursor orifice as well as the precursor. The recurrent of precursor prolapse. This photograph is of the young bull which was operated for the precursor prolapse. And bull, young bull are habitual for the masturbation. And due to the application of the abdominal sling and bull every day in morning masturbate in the abdominal place. So the things what happen, this the inner layer of the precursor comes with contact of the abdominal slings and it is continuously rubbing during the masturbation. And due to this, the rubbing on the frictions of this prepusal layer, the inflammation is developed and the recurrent of prepusal prolapse is occurring. In photographs, it's in the same boards, the recurrence of the prepusal prolapse is seen. Again, the board operated for the second time for the prepusal prolapse and board was uneventful recovery without any complications then after. The stricture formation is also a complication for precursor prolapse. When we put the incident at the skin precursor junction, there may be more chances of the post operative stricture formation. But when we put the incident below and beneath the skin precursor junction, it reduces the chances of post operative stricture formation. So, this is the same bull photographs which was suffered with the stricture formation after the surgery. Recovery. Yes, this young bull was operated for the two times. For first time, precursor prolapse, and then again due to the habit of the masturbation in abdominal sling, again bull suffer with the precursor prolapse. The reoccurrence of precursor prolapse the occur, and after the second surgery, bull was recovered uneventful, and it is the nowadays give a normal service in her. Or in those sides. The same photographs with the bulls. Again, this is the recovered bulls and again using for the natural service. This bull was also again for natural service in heart. Now we see one by one video. I stop sharing of the PPT and starting the one by one video. So this is the prolapse fourth degree prolapse mask. It looks like elephant trunk and bull suffering with the severe edema, deep laceration, then the necrosis and the fibrosis. So you can really see the different necrosis in the, at the end or at the opening. The larger size is due to the fibrous tissue. So this is the preoperative aseptic surgical site. So 
So in this video, pre-operative preparation of the surgical site is required. The saving of the surgical site, the hairs are removed from the surgical site for the prefer for the aseptic surgery. So in video is visible that the removing of the all the hair by the shaving. Then after the shaving, remove all the dirt, dung, and the necros tissue. So if this time video, remove of the necros tissue, dung, dirt, and the scar tissue of the scab which is occurred due to the menstruation of the wound. So slowly, slowly clean over the prolapsed mass by using the scrub. And this, the proper cleaning is helpful. The proper cleaning is helpful for the aseptic surgery and the performed easy surgery. See, at the point for the opening of the previous process, there is scar formation and the necros tissue which is visible. So slowly, slowly remove this all the scar formation down, dirt, and the necros tissue. So the whole remove all the part of the necros tissue. It is easily visible now to remove the necros tissue. See. Okay. Now remove the necros tissue and clean the left mass. <laughs> So the proper cleaning is the most important prior to surgery and it is very easy to perform the cleaning part after restraining into the wound, into standing position in crevice and tie one limb with the pipe. So it will prevent the kicking during the cleaning of the prolapse mask because this cleaning procedure is also remain a painful for the animals. So due to the pain, it will kick the Doctor, so prevent the kicking, tie one limb with the pipe of the crevice and slowly, slowly cleaning all the dirt, dung, necros tissue, scab tissue from the prolapsed mass. After the cleaning, that go for the washing of the usual cavity, use the dosing. And for the dosing, use the povidone iodine solutions and clean all the precursor cavity prior to surgery to prevent or to minimize the chances of the contamination. Otherwise, there is a urine inside the precursor cavity in which may be increased the chances of the contamination and the infection during the surgery. So slowly, slowly go for the washing of the precursor cavity, which is called dosing of the dosing of tubular cavity by using five percent uh, sorry by using poidon iodine solution not five percent so in video you can see the dosing of the cavity so see so the movement of bone which so tying of limb is helpful in such movement Dosing means cleaning of the site. So after the dosing, go for the ring block. Prepare the site by using the betadine swab at the above the not at above the skin prepusal junction. So in the video we can see the preparation of the site for the local infiltration of two percent lignocaine. Hydrochloride. So use the first use the smaller size needle twenty percent. But due to the some curious pull, the bending of the needle is occurred. See in video you can see 
the bending of needle is equal. That's why it required many times larger size needle. So first try go with the 20 size or 20 goes needle. If the bending is occurred due to the bull movement, then use the 18 goes needle for the local infiltration. And above this king trichosal junction in circular pattern for the proper analgesia and the loss of pain during the surgery because we are not going for the general anesthesia in large animal we just go for the sedation so due to the sedation the movement in animals and the pain stimuli is many times seen to, to control this pain stimuli during the surgery local infiltration in being low is required So this is the local infiltration of lignopen in circular pattern simultaneously, and this is help to control the pain during the surgery. In video, you can see the USG of the prolapsed mass. So this ultrasonography is helpful to detecting the any lesions in the prepuce, trauma, necrosis, fibrosis, edema. Such lesions we can easily see by the ultrasonography. So this ultrasonography is so, do you want to go? Do you want to go? Do you want to I know the again. So here in video, we can see the complete preparation of the surgical site for the aseptic surgery. The bull and the site is covered with the sterile drap and palpate penis, glance penis, where it is visible. Because in lateral condition and due to the sedation effects, the penis is relaxed and it will come to the opening. So take care at the time of the incident that the penis is not at the below the site of incision. The site of incision is just below skin trifusal junction, below and beneath the skin trifusal junction. A circular incision is given over the skin and then slowly, slowly go for the soft tissue, deception and take care of the blood vessel, minimum damage of soft tissue and minimum damage of blood vessel. If the bleeding during the incident and the surgery is primarily controlled by application of artery forceps. And this afterward, then it is ligated by the blood from chromic carrier to zero number. So equal amount of the outer and inner layer of the prefusal product mass was cut. And the slowly, slowly, this, see, this is the thicker part of the product which indicate that Glance of penis is remain at that due to the stretching of the tripuse from the outer side to body. And then go for slowly and cut. See now the opening of the tripuse is occurred and apply the Ellis tissue for set 
to keep the inner layer of the prepuser outer side of the prepuser orifice. Otherwise, due to the elastic tissue nature, it will go inside the prepuser cavity, and then it is very difficult to isolate and again pull to outer side of the prepuser orifice. So, at the end of the opening, the inner layer of the prepuse application of the two case tissue for set to holding the prepuse outer side. So, primarily the bleeding controlled by the application of the artery process and it is ligated by the chromic catgut. And then go for the suturing of the wound. So here you can see the suturing of the wound by using Vicryl zero number and the suture pattern is the simple inter -pattern. The suture of the outer layer of the prepuse and the inner layer of prepuse by the simple interpret suture. And the middle elastic tissue should be incorporated into the each and every suture for the proper and the smoothing movement of the penis after the recovery. Extension and for a proper extension and the retraction of the penis. The movement of elastic tissue is the most important for this phenomenon. That's why the suturing of the elastic tissue with the outer and inner layer is the most important thing. So in middle, it is incorporated and then suture the cervical bone. So in video, you can see the simple interpret suture which is used to closing the wound. So outer first is the outer layer, then middle connective tissue, and then the inner layer, and then tie the knot. So the elastic tissue is the most important for the proper extension and the destruction of the penis at the time of ovulating. So in video, we can see the suture was started from the one side and it is continued in circular pattern. So zero number of micro is more suitable for the suturing as compared to one number or one zero or two zero. It also gives a strength to the suture. So now suturing is completed. Now this whole the surgical wound is visible, washed with the normal slide. And if there is remaining space in, in between any sutures, and take again one or two sutures if required. Cleaning of the site with the normal saline. Now, the local infiltration of the dexona at the site of surgery after the completion of the suturing to control the post-operative inflammation in the bones. So this the application of the dexona after the surgery is the most helpful. So here you can see in video, this is the amputated prolapsed mass. There is a deep laceration, necrosis, fibrosis, this whole the necros tissue and the power was washed out before starting the surgery. So this is the amputated prolapsed mass. In which outer and inner equal amount of the refuse is cut.
So this is the second wound surgery. Prepare the surgical, cover the tubules with the sterile traps, prepare the site, apply the battery, and then go for the circular incision below and beneath of the skin. I have operated more than 100 cases of prefusion collapse, but this is a, one of the most challenging case for me for the proper recovery, not for the amputation. For amputation, this case is very easy, but for the proper recovery, it is very difficult. I have never seen such cases. See, there is a deep tissue or the necros, this blackest, blackest color tissue or dead tissue. And this is the elastic tissue. See, this core is the black tissue. And it is not up to that part. It is dead tissue are remaining to deeper part also. So slowly, slowly remove it's a separate bluntly. This blackish color is the dead tissue, and the pinkish color is the live tissue. So I removed slowly, slowly. So there is no any bleeding, no any blood circulation. And see, this is the dead tissue. And this is the elastic tissue of the prepuce. So slowly, slowly, I cut and bluntly remove this whole the dead tissue. See, this all are the dead tissue, dead elastic tissue. And slowly, slowly remove this part. The blackish color indicates the dead tissue and the pinkish color indicates the light tissue. So this whole are the dead tissue and this pink is the light tissue. So slowly, slowly and bluntly remove this whole the dead tissue. I have out of 100 cases, I have seen only this one cases to this much dead tissue inside the tissues. So slowly, slowly. Bluntly separate this all the dead tissue and remove from the cavity. So, in video, you can easily see to remove the blood of all the dead tissue. Now, the remaining pinkish tissue is the light tissue, so it will keep as such and preserve the maximum tissue at equal amount. Outer and inner layer is lastly cut the tissues. So this is the slowly, slowly removing of all the dead tissue. This, this is the same with the suturing of the surgical wound by simple interrupted technique by using the zero number white tape. Inner and outer layer of the people was sutured with elastic tissue, middle elastic tissue. So here in video, the suturing of the surgical wound is seen. In this case, due to the necrosis of the elastic tissue. So there is a no any middle elastic tissue are present at the surgical side. That's why directly suture of the surgical wound without without the middle elastic tissue due to the necrosis and the removal of all the dead tissue in the absence at the surgical side. That's why it's required to 
should play directly inner and outer play. Even through in such type of the serious case, the bull was recovered uneventfully, and nowadays it is used for the normal breeding. That video I will show you in last. So this is the slowly slowly. And due to the blood dissection, this whole the bleeding is the capillary bleeding for the oozing of the blood. Suturing of the So this is the moon after the complete suturing. This is the moon after the and the relaxed penis for the glass come out from the opening. This is the amputated mask and remove the dead necrotic elastic tissue from the surgical site. So this much tissue, dead tissue is removed during the surgery and this is the amputated OF mask. So this is about the This is about this collar bull was recovered from the surgery. After survey and nowadays they are routinely used for the normal breeding. So this is the glimpse of recovered breeding bull after the survey. This bull was operated for the two times due to the rear consumption of the collapse. This is the young bull also recovered well and nowadays used for the natural survey. This is also a young bull and recovered well using for natural service. See, the, I seen the one case out of 100, the ne uh, dead necrotic tissue of the elastic tissue that was removed from this bull. This is the bull. The bull name is the Ontario. This is a very majestic bull. And this bull was bred by and grown by the C. Pradeep Singh Ji Rawal from Bhavnagar, who is world known gear cow breeder. You see, the person, Dr. Pradeep Singh Rawal Ji, is the famous for gear breeding in worldwide, not only in India.
and this is his goal. The name is Ontario. Before opening of the precursor project, the bull was asked by the Brazilian in 65 years. This bull was asked by the Brazilian in 65 lakhs and the owner was not ready to sell out this bull. Till date, the bull remained with the Pradeep Siddhi Rao and they are using into the natural breeding. See, the bulls bull suffering with the fourth degree diffusion prolapse and then too much dead necrotic tissue was removed from this bull. So this is the goat gift, is the majestic gill breeding bull by the character wise, by the look wise, by the size, shape, and his progeny. Yes, this bull progeny sold out not less than two legs. Nowadays, this is the seven to eight year old bull, and the owner sold many of its progeny, more than two legs of each, male or the female. Many times they get more price, more than five lakhs of the price of this bull progeny, especially the male calf, and people purchase from him. So this is, we can can't say this is the value of this bull, maybe crore or the more than of the bull, and he also selling the cement doses of this bull. So this is the same bull Ontario and the video is after the recovery or uh, after the surgery, after the four day of surgery, you see at the site of surgery, the mild swelling is present, but then after it will subside and nowadays bull is fully used for the metal bleeding after the successful surgery of the prefusion products. And that's why the shortage of very good breeding bull in foreign they call from the breeding means they are then the bull supplied with the previous price they are not used for the further breeding but in India due to its breed characteristics the shortage of proven bulls and the availability of the less good character bulls after the surgery again reuse of the bull is the requirement of the time in this area due to the less proven breeding bull. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Vadalia sir. A nice presentation you have given. Sir, what are you said? I'm audible. Yes, sir. I'm yes, audible. Yes, sir. Okay, you have given nice presentation, and uh, we have seen very good videos. Uh, and uh, I think that this information is very fruitful to our students. And in future, I think that uh, our students will dare uh, to operate uh, animals in field. So um, uh, um, uh, I request uh, to my dear students: Is there any query regarding this lecture? Any question from your side? Dr. Jignesh. Yes, sir. You again recapitulate my Green college man. days. Green man. When I operated so much uh, surgical cases. So it's, yes, a, uh, it's a divine story for me. Yes, sir. Uh, doctor, what is the recovery rate of uh, third degree of official prolapse? Sir, the recovery rate is depending totally on the uh, post-operative management. If the owner remain at here in indoor, if we keep the indoor patient, but majority time the bull, the owner was not ready for the indoor to that patient. But the more than 80%, if the properly care is taken, then the more than 80% recovery is seen after the surgery of the second, third, and the fourth degree prefusal prolapse. 
nice explanation about the therapeutic and management and also it uh, is also help to the research further and fails the veterinary also. Uh, thank you, sir. I thank you to the respected day and principal of the sir and uh, as a director, sir, uh, organized secretary, Dr. Arun Sarma, sir, co-organized secretary, Dr. Rakesh W. Sarakar, sir, chairman of this session, and uh, PG students, and some faculty members of this program, and being with us. And thank you, thank you very much, all of you. So we will meet tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please, all participants are requested to fill the feedback in chat box. On the basis of your feedback, we will going to provide the certificate on you. If you fill all the five days uh, feedback at the proper time, after that, we can provide the certificate to you people on Failing it, we will not going to provide. So please fill the all the feedback forms regularly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for all.